Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto banished and wanted back. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Dark Wolf Rider and link in the description and support Rider. Let's start the video. The Fall of the Ninja The Rise of the Hunter. It's over, Naruto said Sasuke was knocked out and laying on the ground the retrieval mission was a success. All this effort to retrieve a traitor, and yet I keep getting an ominous feeling that something bad was coming, Naruto thought to himself. As a precaution Naruto applied seals to Sasuke to prevent him from activating his eyes, should he wake up and a knockout seal, in case he tried to run away on the way back to the village. The ominous feeling worried him greatly because one thing the villagers taught him to rely on was his instincts, whether that would mean who he could trust or when something bad was coming, the feeling put him on edge because of how strong it was and how it kept growing stronger by the second. It's not just you kid, I feel the same thing something big is going to happen and we're probably going to be stuck right in the middle of it like usual. Before I forget, I want to thank you for lending me your charka to fight against Sasuke and his curse seal power. I don't think I would have won or survived without your help. No problem kid, if you died who would I take pleasure in tormenting, Karama replied. Naruto couldn't help but chuckled to himself, he could see the looks on people's faces if he told them about the bold he and Karama share. One thing he never expected to do was make a friend brother figure out of the fox, but it was easy to do once they let go of the hatred that surrounded them. He also knew without the fox at his back, he would have died a long time ago at the hands of the villagers and the blind hatred towards him. As the main gates of Kanoha came into view Naruto knew the mission was almost over which was good news to him since he was running on fumes at this point. At the same time, he reached the gate checkpoint a squad of Anbu appeared before him, led by a purple-haired woman who always kept an eye out for him in the past when he was younger. We will take the Ichiha into custody while Crow and Bear escort you to the hospital Cat said. A few weeks had passed since the retrieval mission was completed and half of the team was resting in the hospital with critical injuries, on a good note, no one was killed on the mission. The mission was a success because of the hard work of the team and the extra help that Tsunade sent to back up the team. The villagers were not happy with Naruto through saying he put the Ichiha's life in danger by roughing him up so much not caring about the shape he was in or the fact he tried multiple times to try and kill him. The tension got worse when the villagers learned Naruto used Kurama's chakra to fight the brat on even grounds, they began calling out for punishment on Naruto to remind him of his place in the village before he tries to take revenge on them for what they did to him in the past. Naruto decided he had recovered enough to get out of the hospital, he was tired of getting dirty looks from the staff and the whispers, all because he kicked Sasuke's butt. Even his own teammate and sensei yelled at him while he was recovering from surgery, Sakura saying it was his fault that Sasuke tried to leave in the first place, saying he was the cause of all their problems. How is it my fault, he ran away because of the curse mark, which was never properly sealed, Naruto said to Sakura quickly losing patience with the pink-haired banshee. It's always your fault, you are nothing but a failure that his parents abandoned because of how useless you are, Sakura shouted to Naruto. Naruto said nothing but clenched his fist in anger getting tired of listening to this worthless fangirl lecture him when she is the only worthless person on the team, he is the one who is forced to pick up all the slack and do all the work because the others were too lazy and weak to do it themselves. The Kashi started lecturing him on using a dangerous technique on a teammate not caring or believing that Sasuke did the same thing to him multiple times. I am greatly disappointed in you I thought I taught you to respect your teammates, but I guess you're nothing but a failure, after all, I'm talking to Tsune to get you removed from my team because you refuse to cooperate and only cause problems for the team dynamics, Kakashi stated. Naruto couldn't believe that they are playing off Sasuke's multiple attempts to kill him as nothing and then saying he was under the influence of the cursed seal which was the result of his actions. Naruto could only scoff in disbelief, Sasuke knew full well what he was doing he wanted Naruto dead to gain more power. No matter how he tried to defend himself they heard nothing of the sort choosing to believe that he was the cause of their problems. Naruto always got up out of the bed and brought out a storage scroll with backup clothes inside that he kept on hand. Naruto chose to go out as his real self and not the mask he created and worn for so long. Instead of the short blonde wearing a kill me orange jumpsuit, there was now 6.5 foot tall blonde wearing a snug black t-shirt and forest green colored pants, a pair of steel toe boots on his feet instead of the typical ninja sandals. The top the look off Naruto put on a headed dark red jacket with black flames on the bottom and blue flames on the sides. Naruto remembered when he started wearing a mask to hide his emotions and true face from the village. He knew that if the village found out the demon was too strong, he would be a threat to the village or try to take revenge on them for what they did to him. This started soon after his sixth birthday which was marked with the villagers attacking and then tying him to a post and burning him alive. 
he survived the attack, but when he was in the hospital one of the nurses injected him with a large amount of a strange drug to finish him off. The drugs instead unlocked parts of his brain, making him super intelligent, at the same time the drug made his body start producing hormones at a large rate. His body also underwent changes his healing factor got boosted to super levels. With his enhanced intelligence, he was able to create a special training area those seals to train in, as Naruto advanced further in seals he was able to modify the training ground cube in different ways. The ways being changing the area and the box to different environments and enemies to fight against and later changing the flow of time inside the cube so it flowed slower inside the cube than in the real world. He was able to set the time in the cube so that a day outside was a year inside, this allowed him to maximize the amount of training he could do without raising suspicions from those watching him. He was forced to hide his true strength, otherwise the villagers would attack him, saying he was too strong and had to be put in line. He also remembered how the old man Hokage had placed a variety of seals to make him loyal to the village and suppression seals on to make it harder for him to think and concentrate. The reason why was he feared that Naruto would become just like Orochimaru and turn against the village. He was able to remove them over time in the cube, Hiruzen never checked them because he made sure to never give him reason to doubt his loyalty. Naruto was walking around the village, no one paying any attention to him because he wasn't wearing his standout clothes, his hood kept his face in shadows with an illusion seal preventing anyone from identifying him. His clothes, however, drew looks from women commenting on how good his clothes looked on him and wondering what was under the hood. As he was walking around Naruto ended passing by an open restaurant with what sounded like Sakura complaining to anyone in here shot about him and how everything was his fault. As he got closer Naruto also noticed the other gen and rookies were also in the restaurant, the others showed little reaction to Sakura's whining with only Ino and Kiba agreeing with Sakura about how much a failure he is. Shikamaru and Tenten were both in silent contemplation, more than likely worried about their teammates who had been gravely injured in the retrieval mission, Shino was there as well, no doubt acting as a neutral party in the conversation. It's all his fault, he is always causing problems for me and Sasuke, I told him to bring him back, but instead he tries to kill him, he is nothing but a monster that needs to be put down, Sakura said. I agree all he has ever done is cause problems for everyone else, Ino said. Kiba said nothing but nodded his head in agreement, he was still upset about Naruto's lucky win in the preliminaries. Hinata stayed quietly unable to defend her crush because of her shyness. Naruto kept his head down, choosing to ignore Sakura's rant about him, to him it's not like he hadn't heard it before. She complains about him being useless, but she is the useless one not training at all choosing to believe in some stupid fantasy over real life. Naruto headed to a shinobi bar where the only shinobi are allowed and giving him some peace from the villagers and their stupidity. As Naruto moved towards the bar to get a drink, he noticed all the senseis together at a table, he wouldn't be surprised if they were talking about him and how he injured Sasuke. Naruto ordered chilled sake the burn of it going down, helped ease the pain of everything that he had dealt with today. As he was drinking, he began to overhear the sensei's conversation as he suspected it was complaints about him. No doubt that it was Kakashi was complaining about him and how he was the cause of the current situation. There is no way Naruto could have beaten Sasuke, he is a useless dead weight on my team, while well, Sasuke was the rookie of the year in the academy, Kakashi stated. The other senseis were surprised at how Kakashi was talking about Naruto, he was known for always promoting teamwork and togetherness when teaching. Right now he is doing the exact opposite of everything he preached. Naruto couldn't help but shake his head thinking just how much of a liar Kakashi was preaching so much about teamwork but promotes favoritism instead, he gave Sasuke all sorts of special training while well, he refused to teach him anything. You're wrong about Naruto, he is the farthest thing from failure, not only did he defeat last year's rookie of the year Niji, but he also defeated Gara when he released his demon to attack the village during the invasion. I heard how your precious golden boy went up against him and got his butt handed to him, Anko said. Those reports were probably falsified by someone Naruto is and will always be a useless failure, Kakashi said calmly. Naruto lost his mood to drink and told the bartender to give his bottle to the Jonin table while well, he left the bar, not wanting to deal with the bullshit going on in the bar. Unbeknownst to Naruto, Anko had followed him outside wanting to see who was under the hood. As Naruto moved to the rooftops to get to the Hokage's office quicker, Anko confronted him. Is there reason why you are following me? Naruto asked. I just wanted to thank you for the free booze and wanted to know why you are hiding your face. Anko replied. I have my reasons for hiding that is all you need to know Naruto replied. In order to prevent any more questions Naruto ducked into the shadows and moved quickly to Tsunade's office in order to ask to be transferred off Team 7, the team was a complete and under failure in his mind. As he got closer to the Hokage's office Naruto began to argue from inside the office, from the voices he could tell it was the elders arguing with Tsunade about the retrieval mission. 
the is far too dangerous to leave unchecked, he severely wounded the last Achiha during the mission, Hamura said. The battle site shows lingering amounts of the fox's chakra in the area, showing the boy used its power during the mission, Kaharu said. He was left little to no choice to use the beast's power to fight against the traitor who was willingly using the curse seal power, Sunade replied to the elders. The curse seal should have fully sealed away by Jiraiya in order to prevent the Achiha from using it, Sunade said. Regardless, the boy is quickly becoming a threat to the village and steps must be taken to protect the village, Danzo said. Especially with the news about the group that is hunting him has been brought to light, Danzo said. What are you getting at? Tsunade asked Danzo not liking the tone of the elder's voice or the uneasy feeling she was getting. We made the best decision to protect the village, we are banishing Naruto in order to protect the village from future threats, Danzo said. After Danzo finished talking there was an easy silence in the room Tsunade couldn't believe what she was hearing they wanted to banish Kanoha's most loyal shinobi in order to save their own butts. The silence was quickly broken by Tsunade slamming her fists on the desk. There is no way I will allow that to happen, you are sending Naruto out to die to the Akatsuki, Tsunade said. Naruto couldn't believe what he was hearing, but soon began to shake with rage because of the elders. Naruto knew he had to calm down, otherwise they would notice him, well part of him knew this could happen, it didn't lessen the feeling of betrayal. Naruto hid because the door to the office was opening, letting the elders out with Tsunade following right behind them, arguing about his banishment. Naruto could only guess Tsunade would try to bring the matter before the council to overturn it, but Naruto knew that wouldn't work because of a hidden law the elders made that allows them to make one order go through, regardless of the council or the Hokage's interference. With the office empty Naruto snuck into the office with a banishment order sitting on the desk, using one of the seals he created Naruto made an exact copy of the document. He planned on sending this to all the lands that Kanoha has treaties with because of his hard work, he won't let the village banish him and them profit off his work. Did I am sorry, I never expected the village to go this far because of their foolish hatred toward you, Kurama said softly to his friend. It's not your fault, the village has been rotting away since the night I was born, Naruto replied. What will you do now? Kurama couldn't help but feel angry with this ungrateful village, Naruto gave and gave, but the village never gave anything back to him except pain and misery. No matter what the village did, Naruto refused to give in to the hatred that surrounded him, over time he had come to like and respect him for his iron will and gentle heart. Hirama had lived centuries seen countless people faced with lesser problems crumble or break under the pressure, but his host refused to be broken by this corrupt village of fools. The village had done everything from beating him bloody, burning him alive, skinning him and raping him all for their own twisted pleasure, but every time he asked why he didn't want revenge on the village, his reply was a question that he could never answer. Would revenge be worth it if you become just like the villagers? Naruto knew he had to act fast, the elders could have something planned for him as a way of getting one last shot in at him. He created a squad of clones and had them gather everything from his various safe houses in the village while he went to his apartment to collect all his stuff, not wanting to leave any of his hidden projects behind. Before leaving the office Naruto moved the picture of the Yandame Hokage his father to reveal the safe hidden behind it. Naruto quickly bit his thumb and swiped it across the lock to open it, the contents being his will and the location of his home. Naruto wasted time and headed over there not wanting to leave his parents things for villagers to try and take. Once more Naruto created a squad of clones these to collect all his parents stuff that was denied to him. As Naruto walked around the house, he stumbled upon a room with his name on it, feeling curious he opened the door to reveal a nursery one that was supposed to be for him. The crib was made from expensive wood and decorated for him. They really did love after all, Naruto said. He couldn't help but wonder for so long if his parents cared for him or did, they support the village's actions and the pain he was put through. Jiraiya didn't give a damn about him and he was supposed to be his godfather, but he only cared about satisfying his own needs. This was all the proof he needed and was glad he came here, the all too familiar sensation of his clones dispelling was a sign it was time to go. With everything gathered and sealed away in traveling scrolls Naruto headed to one last place before leaving the village for good. That was his parents' graves to pay his respect one last time before leaving, he hoped that they would understand that he could no longer be a part of the village that they gave their lives to protect. In order to prevent the village from realizing that he left he used a technique that he created to make a substitute of himself to pose as him in the village. As he headed out the gate a major rainstorm unleashed itself upon the area, this would be a great favor to Naruto, because the rain would hide his tracks and scent from any trackers that would be sent out. His first destination would be Wave Country to talk to Tizana and rent a boat to take him to his mother's homeland of Yuzu. He wanted to collect the treasures his clan kept sealed away in order to prevent them from being stolen. Unbeknownst to Naruto however a third party was watching Naruto through a scrying pool, the goal of the group was to capture Naruto and bring him to their leader. 
the group was cloaked in shadows, so no visible details could be made about the group. Keep an eye on him from the shadows, if the opportunity presents itself capture him, the voice coming from a cloaked figure the others nodded their heads in understanding, they knew what fate awaited them if they failed this mission. At the Naruto Uzumaki bridge, two days later. Naruto soon arrived at the bridge leading to Wave Country that he helped create, he was surprised to see that the bridge was named after him. Huh, I didn't know they named the bridge after me, Naruto said to Kurama. You gave them hope when they had given up, of course, they would name it after you, Kurama replied. It gave Naruto a great feeling inside knowing he was able to help the people of Wave Country in their darkest hour. As Naruto made his way to Tizana's house he saw how much Wave had changed since the fall of Gato. Naruto wanted to head to the bridge builder's house to talk to the man about getting a boat ride to Yuzu and to let him know about the banishment order. When Naruto reached the house and knocked it was Inari who answered the door. Who are you? Inari asked not recognizing Naruto because his face was covered, Naruto took off the hood. It's Naruto is your grandfather home. Naruto replied Inari hugged Naruto happy to see the person who freed them from Gato's control. Naruto went inside and soon found Tizana sitting down and drinking in the living room. Naruto not that we're not happy to see you, but what are you doing here? Tizana asked. Naruto sat down at the table and began explaining everything to the family, from the start with the retrieval mission to him leaving the village due to banishment. By the end the family was disgusted with the village, they banished a loyal shinobi for a traitor. That's the story, I came to Wave to hire a boat that would take me to Yuzu, Naruto said. Betting a boat won't be a problem the country owes you a debt of gratitude for giving us freedom from the tyrant, Tizana said. Thank you, the sooner we can leave the better I rather not draw any attention to myself right now, just in case I'm being tailed, Naruto said. Naruto well confident he covered his tracks when he left the village still couldn't shake the feeling, he was being watched by someone or something. I'll get take care of the boat at the same time I will contact the daimyo and inform him that Kanoha has banished our hero, Tizana said. While father is doing that, I will help you gather supplies from in town, the people are more than willing to help you out, Tsunami said. Within a few hours, all the preparations were set and the boat was ready to leave, Naruto said his goodbyes to the family thanking them for their kindness in his hour of need. The boat would be taking would be passing close to Whirlpool on their normal route, this way they could help out Naruto without drawing any unwanted suspicions if anyone came snooping along. The trip to the island would take a few hours, so Naruto decided to meditate and talk to Kurama to kill time, one of the crew would let him know when they were close. Soon enough the island came into view, the crew set up a small sailboat that would get to Yuzu and from there to sea country. This way he could be traveling in a separate direction from the ship and further hiding his tracks. As Naruto docked his boat on the island he felt a warm calming sensation from the island, almost if the island was welcoming him home. Moving at top speed it didn't take Naruto long to reach the center of the island and the remnants of the fallen village, the village itself had special seals on the village to protect it from time and would be grave robbers. Naruto created many clones giving them the task of burying the dead to give them peace, while Naruto headed into the cage tower to collect any scrolls that remained. Once that was finished, he headed to the vault where all the treasures and sacred scrolls of the Uzumaki clan were kept hidden away. Naruto cleaned out the vault of everything inside and made his way to the graves of his fallen clansmen to offer a prayer to the dead. But that done Naruto headed to the boat and away from Whirlpool for the last time, he chose to keep the protection seals on to prevent anyone from disturbing the dead. As Naruto headed toward sea country the feeling of being watched came back stronger than before, one of the most important thing Naruto learned in the village was to trust his instincts. Right now, they were screaming at him about something dangerous was watching him. Soon enough Naruto will find out how right his instincts are, because the unknown group was still hot on his tail, and they would stop at nothing to capture him. The group had monitored Naruto since his arrival in Wave Country and followed to the outskirts of Yuzu until the barrier seals prevented them from getting any closer. The group would be making their move as soon as Naruto reached Sea Country because their base was there and they had others on standby in case anything went wrong. Once he reaches landfall move in to capture have the others be ready in case, he tries to make a break for it, the group leader said, the others nodded their heads in understanding. Something doesn't feel right kid, be on your guard I think we have trouble in coming, Kurama said to Naruto something in the air was making him feel uneasy. I know, I can feel it too, Naruto replied. It was far too quiet and the air around him was very heavy with tension, trouble was coming fast and it was coming in hard. As if Kami could hear him several cloaked figures appeared before our hero, the feeling he got off them was not good in any way. What concerned him the most was the fact he couldn't feel any charka from these people, which was impossible in the elemental nations, as even the civilians had charka. One of the group members stepped forward, he wore the same black robes as the rest of the group, but he had on a strange red cape on top of his robes, Naruto figured this meant he was the leader of the group. 
you will be coming with us boy, trying to resist us is an unwise move, the leader spoke in a commanding voice. Naruto gave no reply other than to get into a fighting stance to defend himself against the unknown group, his plan was to create a distraction, then put as much distance between the groups as possible. The plan for the group was to distract the target with fighting, while a few others hid in the shadows, waiting to knock him out with trank bombs. In only a few minutes Naruto had taken several members of the group and was currently fighting the leader, Naruto decided to use a flash technique to blind them while he got away. As Naruto readied a jutsu to temporarily blind them a cloaked figure hiding him in the shadows threw several trank bombs at Naruto's feet, the trank was designed to be fast acting and to work on Naruto. Naruto only heard the bangs at his feet before he started to smell the chemicals. Naruto get out of there the chemicals are shutting down your body, Kurama yelled through the link, but it was too late. The trank bomb soon worked its magic and Naruto collapsed on the ground. Grab the boy and the injured and let's get back to base, with that said the leader quickly opened a portal to their base bringing Naruto along as a prisoner. The group arrived at their base and began setting up the main portal for the final transfer to their home base. The energy that powered the portal was made unsteady by the natural charka and the elemental nations, so the group couldn't keep it open for long, well small portals weren't a problem the main one uses so much spiritual energy that when charka is mixed in it makes the energy unstable and risks destroying the gate and leaving them trapped in the elemental nations. As the group was making their final preparations, Naruto was in his mindscape talking to Kurama about the current situation they were in. What do you think will happen now? Naruto asked. Kurama wasn't sure, but he could feel something bad was going to happen to Naruto and he would have to make a choice on what to do. The group was ready and already setting up explosives to destroy the base and portal once they went through, they had to move quickly because the portal was already experiencing fluxes from the natural energy of the area. Naruto was pulled from his mindscape and found he was bound in cuffs that blocked his ability to use his chakra. As a precaution to prevent any escape attempts two men on either side took a firm grasp on each of his arms. As the group entered the portal a massive spike hit the portal, causing it to flux and become unstable. The portal began to fire off bolts of energy that hit the cloaked figures, turning them to ash in an instant. Naruto tried to escape from the portal, but the energy began drawing everything inside and soon sucking Naruto into the unknown. Shortly afterward, the portal collapsed in on itself ending with a large explosion that wiped out the entire base and removing any trace of it being there. Naruto was failing through space and time the energy around him made him feel like his body was being torn apart soon enough, Naruto found himself in his mindscape in front of Kurama's cage. Naruto felt that this was the end for him, but he didn't want to drag his only friend with him, so he went to remove the seal and let Kurama go free. Kurama, however, had a different idea in mind, he already knew what Naruto would do when they were pulled into the portal, but instead of escaping when the seal was realized, Kurama focused all his charkas into Naruto, so he could live on instead of him. What are you doing Kurama this is your chance to be free after being sealed away for so long? Naruto asked his longtime friend. I have lived long enough Naruto, you deserve to live your life the way you want to and not under some mask of false happiness, Kurama replied. Enemies that later became the best of friends knew that time was running out and they would have to give their final goodbyes to one another. Promise me you will live your life to fullest and without regret, Kurama asks his friend. I promise, I will never forget you my friend Naruto replied. Kurama held his fist out for one final fist bump, Naruto met Kurama with his own and both friends had tears in their eyes as they said their final goodbyes. But that last act, the legendary nine-tailed fox was no more, Naruto has knocked out afterward. A portal opened shortly afterward depositing our hero in a hidden cave in unknown lands. The portal immediately shut afterward, leaving Naruto in a new world with new adventures in store. Enjoy. Speaking with Kami, Consequences of the Banishment. Naruto woke to find himself in his mindscape directly in front of Kurama's old cage, he couldn't stop the feeling of sadness as he remembered the loss of his oldest friend. Naruto was soon pulled out of those thoughts by a blinding flash of light that lit up his mindscape, when the light faded away there was an unknown woman standing in his mindscape. She was wearing a pure white kimono and white hair and eyes that glowed with power. Who are you? Naruto asked having trouble keeping the fear out of his voice. I am what mortals refer to as Kami, she replied softly to ease the worries Naruto felt. Why are you here? Naruto asked. I am here to talk to you and explain what happens now because you are no longer able to return to the elemental nations, Kami replied. I don't understand why you need to talk to me. How does me not being in the nations cause problems? Naruto asked confused by the current situation. You were chosen to be the child of prophecy in the nations, the one who lead them into an era of peace throughout the land, Kami said. Naruto said nothing in reply at first, his mind overloaded with the bombshell Kami dropped on him out of the blue. You really know how to lay it on people don't you, Naruto replied in a sarcastic tone. 
Ami gave no reply, but merely giggled at Naruto's response, she knew he would react that way from watching him for so long. At least it was destiny in the elemental nations. That is no longer a possibility because of the group that abducted you and brought you to this new land. However, this world needs your help, Kami said. What do you mean? Naruto asked. The group that abducted you was under orders of the powerful entity that is trying to rule over this world and enslave its populace, Kami said in a serious tone. Two things, one what am I up against and two whose butt do I start kicking first, Naruto replied to Kami, hoping to get any information at all about what he may be up against. The cultists that captured you are mainly the foot soldiers who carry out tasks for their master. The group has opened portals to other worlds bringing monsters and other creatures under their control, Kami said. Naruto said nothing at first trying to imagine what type of creatures he will be fighting against in the future. Almost as if reading Naruto's thoughts I will give you a journal that will constantly update itself whenever you encounter a new monster or creature. I will also give you weapon plans that will help you in your hunts against the creatures, Kami said. Thank you very much, I greatly appreciate the help you have given, Naruto said with his usual smile. Before we part ways, I have a few gifts for you. I have collected all of your parents' things you were unable to collect before leaving the village, I also put all the elemental nation's techniques in the same scroll, Kami said. One more thing, there are three people want to meet with you before you leave, Kami said. As she finished talking the area lit up once more revealing three new figures, the people were Minato, Kishina, Hagoromo Atsutsuki. Minato and Kishina wasted no time in running over and embracing their child that they were unable to raise themselves. Both parents had tears running down their cheeks as they apologized for the life that he was forced to live and how the people they trusted turned their back on them. I can't apologize enough on how much the village screwed you over, we had so many plans for you and how we wanted to raise you. The village took everything away from you before it could be given, Minato said. I remember the last time I held you could barely fit in my arms, but now you have grown up so much. I am so sorry we wanted to be in your life more than anything, Kishina said with tears in her eyes. It's okay what happened wasn't your fault, Kurama told me everything a while ago. You are here now that's what matters to me, Naruto said. After a few minutes of crying and hugging the family calmed down and relaxed, Naruto then took notice of the other person who he knew to be Hagoromo Atsutsuki, also known as the Sage of the Six Paths. Hello, Kurama told me all about you, Naruto said looking at the man who Kurama considered to be his father. I can only imagine what he told you, Hagoromo said. If you don't mind me asking why are you here? Naruto asked curious to know why the Sage of Six Paths would want to talk to him. Hagoromo explained the history behind his two sons following their birth and how he chose the youngest to succeed him, while the oldest became jealous of his choice. He then talked about their rivalry spread to the descendants. Because of what has happened and how corrupted my eldest son's reincarnation is, I have decided to combine both lines into you making you the next Sage of Six Paths, Hagoromo said. Naruto was speechless he had heard all about the Sage from Kurama, including how strong he was at his prime. Naruto was pulled from his thoughts by a slight burning sensation in his hands looking at his palms, he had a sun mark in his left hand a moon on his right. As a final gift and in order to prevent the elemental nations from abusing them any longer, I will combine the other tailed beasts with you, making you the new ten-tailed dragon. Before you say anything, I left the hosts alive because I knew you wouldn't them killed, Kami said. Naruto and his family were speechless at this development, Naruto was happy to hear that the hosts were still alive, especially Gara, because he was learning how to connect with his sibling. I am afraid our time is up and we must part ways, Naruto once you awaken the changes to your body will be complete and you will be able to use the energy of the new world and Charka of your old world, Kami said. The family made one last hug together before making their final goodbyes, Minato telling Naruto to stick to his beliefs and how proud of the person he has become. Kishina telling him the same things while telling him to find a nice girl or girls to settle down with and give her plenty of grandbabies. But the final goodbye said Naruto faded from his mindscape. Goodbye Naruto, we may meet again if I need your help in the future, Kami said. Hanoha five days after Naruto left the village. The villagers remained unaware of Naruto's departure from the village due to the substitute that he left in hid place, the substitute was called a Shinigami. The Shikigami he had left as a stand-in for himself to cover his tracks, the Shikigami was following its master's orders by staying out of the public eye as much as possible. This would soon end though, because the council had ordered Naruto to be brought before him to face his punishment for hurting the last Ichiha. The Shikigami already knew what would happen, but had play his part in front of the council, it couldn't help but be amazed at the foolishness of the village and its inability to see the truth. The council was already aware of Naruto's banishment, the civilian side wanted to make a spectacle out of banishing the demon, then celebrating afterwards, while the shinobi side was disgusted at the civilians were acting. Unbeknownst to the council however it was Naruto who will have the last laugh. 
the air in the room was tense due to what was going to happen, but that tension was shattered when a pair of Anbu brought Naruto into the room. Why am I here, Bachan? Naruto asked Tsunade. You are here to receive your punishment for harming the last Ichiha during the retrieval mission, Kaharu said. I was following the orders that I was given to bring Sasuke back to the village, Naruto replied. You used excessive force in doing so, calling upon the beast's Sharka during the fight, Hamura said. I had no choice but to do so because Sasuke was using the cursed seal to its fullest extent, I had to use the fox's Sharka to survive the fight against him, Naruto replied with small amounts of anger creeping into his voice. Regardless of the circumstance, you have proven to be a danger to the village with how unstable you can be. Along with the information revealed to us by Jiraiya about the group that will be coming after you, we have decided to act in the best interests of the village, Danzo said. What are you getting at? Naruto asked playing his part of the fool. We have decided to banish you from the village. All information relating to the village will be removed from your mind and your charka will be sealed away, Danzo said. The council room was quiet for a few moments before the civilian council broke out in loud cheers, happy that the demon will be out of their life for good. The shinobi side could only look on in disgust at the civilians and their reactions to the matter. The civilians' cheering was soon cut short by Tsunade slamming her fist down, silencing the room. I will not allow this to happen, I refuse to banish one of our most loyal shinobi, just to save your own skins, Tsunade yelled out. She was not letting the banishment order happen without a fight. She doesn't want to lose what little family she has left. You do not have a choice, the council already voted on the matter, and the end vote was in favor for the banishment, Kaharu said. As the council once again began fighting amongst themselves, the civilians wanting to celebrate the demon's banishment while the shinobi side wanted Naruto to leave in peace, however before anything could continue further a stream of chuckles brought them out of their arguments. What do you find so funny boy? Danzo asked Naruto trying to figure out the reason for him to laugh in his current situation. I'm laughing at you people, the boss was right when he said that you people choose to see and believe only what you think is the truth, the Shikigami said. The council began to get a bad feeling in their stomachs from what the fake said, Naruto couldn't have made a clone to act as a stand-in, is what most of the people in the room thought. The council both shinobi and civilian doubted Naruto's skill at being able to pull one of their eyes. What are you talking about brat? Tsunade asked as she began to get an uneasy feeling, she hoped to have Jiraiya smuggle Naruto out of the village until the heat died down. You people talk about being master ninja and how easy it is to see through deception, but you couldn't tell the difference between the real Naruto and some else playing his role. The Shikigami said while laughing. The shinobi and civilian sides of the council merely scoffed in disbelief, for the civilians firmly believed that Naruto had no talent whatsoever, while the shinobi side felt that Naruto couldn't fool them with all their experience under their belts. The council was proven wrong in their doubts, as the Naruto in the room underwent a transformation before their eyes. When the transformation was done standing in Naruto's place was a tall figure wearing a yellow military uniform, it was wearing a white mask with two black circles for eyes and a large black circle for a mouth. The transformation and character are the same as Pandora's actor from Overlord and I'm. Who or what the devil is you? Tsunade asked wanting to know what is going on. My name is Pandora's actor, I am a Shikigami created by my master Naruto Uzumaki, he said with a bow. Then where is the real demon then? Shinzo a member of the civilian council asked. My master is long gone from this corrupted village, he left early because he knew the civilians would want to make a spectacle of his banishment, and he didn't trust the villagers to not leak his location to any dangerous threats. Pandora said. This is a troublesome situation, how did Naruto know about the banishment order when we just learned of it a few hours ago, Shikaku said in a tired voice. I would like to know that as well, Tsunade asked, hoping to get a clue on where Naruto may be so Jiraiya can protect him until the banishment can be overturned. Naruto found out about the banishment when he visited your office, you were meeting with the elders, and he heard the entire conversation about how he was being banished to protect their own hides, Pandora said. The council room was quiet as they tried to process this information, the elders were extremely annoyed because they had a plan to get rid of the Akatsuki by using Naruto as bait were ruined. You expect us to believe that the dead last was able to plan so far ahead and create you, what a load of garbage, Shinzo said, choosing not to believe what was in front of him. You people were easy to fool because you saw what was on the surface and saw that is the truth, you never believed that Naruto could be stronger, then he let on. You couldn't even tell that he was wearing a mask for so long because you thought it was the real Naruto, Pandora said. Tsunade had suspected that the face Naruto shown to the public was a lie he created to keep the villagers from attacking him, she had done the same thing until Naruto knocked some sense back into her. As the council processed the information that they were given Pandora began to fade away, signaling that the charka that was powering him was running out and he would soon disappear. Tsunade and the others were pulled from their thoughts once again by Pandora's laughter. 
As they turned towards him they noticed that was fading away. What is so funny? We can just use you to track down Naruto's location, Danzo said while signaling to his guard to capture Pandora. You people are what I find funny, you think you're in control of the situation, but that couldn't be further from the truth. My master was several steps ahead of you all, and you all let it happen be choosing to never dig any deeper than what was on the surface. He fooled the entire village into believing a lie without having to lift a finger to do so, Pandora said, amused by how foolish the council was. But his final message said Pandora disappeared in a puff of smoke, leaving behind a paper doll that quickly turned to ash. The council room erupted into a shouting match with the civilians wanting to send out Ninja to track Naruto down and take him out, while the shinobi side wanted him caught before he could release any of Konoha's secrets to the other villages. Finally, Tsunade had enough and demanded silence in the room. Enough, we need to figure out what our next move is going to be. Before you idiot civilians say anything, Naruto can't be in the bingo book because he is no longer a ninja of the village, Tsunade yelled out. The civilians started mumbling to themselves about sending hunters after the brat. Danzo was making his own plans to send his men to capture the boy and bring him back so he could be molded into the perfect weapon for the village. Three weeks later at the same time Naruto went through the portal. It had been three weeks since Naruto was banished from the village, while the villagers celebrated the fact the demon was gone that soon came to an end. Tsunade ended the celebrating by declaring martial law in the village, she was disgusted at the village that Naruto gave so much to protect. Unfortunately for the village all of the allies that the village had trade agreements and trade routes with were not amused at all. They were incredibly upset at the fact the village banished the one that they considered to be a hero to them. The civilian council was trying to figure out why their allies were breaking off with them, they chose to believe it's the demon brat's fault that they are losing business. The situation will only get worse because the fire daimyo is en route to the village to discuss the banishment orders. Council Chambers. The council was once again meeting in order to come up with ways to deal with the fallout of losing so many contracts with their allies. This is the demon brat's fault even after we free the village from his taint, he still finds ways to cause us problems, Yutako said in an angry tone of voice. This caused other civilian members to mummer in agreement with the statement, while the shinobi side rolled their eyes at the stupidity of the civilians. Naruto is not the cause of this situation he was the one who originally convinced the lands to form contracts with us in the first place, Shikaku said in a tired voice. He like many of the shinobi side was getting fed up with listening to the council's whining, he could be napping or cloud watching right now instead of being stuck here. The council room once again erupted into a massive argument about their current situation, but that was only temporary as the fire daimyo slammed open the door to the room. The fire daimyo was not amused in the slightest, he had come to the village to find out why all their allies were breaking their agreements with his land. When he asked the countries why they were breaking their contracts the answer was the same from each of them. The village had banished Naruto for doing his duty and to protect themselves from a dangerous threat. Naruto saved their lands from cruel tyrants, mad scientists, and restored hope and faith to their lands. When the village banished him for doing his job, they wanted nothing to do with that village, this also disgraced him and damaged his reputation as a ruler. Fire Daimyo Sama why are you here? Tsunade asked wondering if he is here because of the fallout from the contracts being broken. I am here to discover why this village banished the one who got so many villages to trade with us but is also a national hero in those lands, the Daimyo said with an iron tone in his voice. He was banished because he gravely harmed the last Ichiha during the retrieval mission and the fact he was becoming a dangerous threat to the village, Shinzo said in reply. So, because he did his job and retrieved a traitor of the village, you foolishly banished him, Ryoku a member of the fire daimyo's guard said. Sasuke was influenced by the cursed seal, he was not in control of his actions. Yutako said. Why wasn't the mark fully sealed away by Jiraiya? In order to prevent that from happening in the first place. The daimyo said annoyed that the incident was taken care of from the beginning before it could get out of control. The kashi sealed away and he was confident that the seal would hold as long as Sasuke resisted the seal's influence, Hamura said. The kashi is not a seal master, the cursed seal should have been permanently sealed away by Jiraiya as soon as possible, not allowing it to take root in the Ichiha. Ryoku said. Any further discussion was silenced by a blinding light in the room, when the light cleared there stood four figures in the room. The council recognized Minato and Kashina, but the other two were unknown to them. Kami is the same description as earlier, the first one was white-haired woman and a skeleton wearing a black robe with a dagger in his mouth and holding a set of prayer beads in his hands. May I ask who the two of you are and why you are here? Tsunade asked with a light tone of fear in her voice, she could feel the power rolling of these two and knew they shouldn't be messed with. I am Kami and my companion is the Shinigami. We're here to inform you of the fallout of your actions, Kami said. 
The council room was completely silent due to the shock of having two gods standing in front of them. The silence was broken when Kami waved her hand and several people were teleported into the room, the people being Jiraiya and the rookie 12, minus Naruto, with their senseis. The group was first woozy from the sudden transport but soon realized where they were. The adults easy recognized the fourth and his wife but didn't know the other two, they only knew that they were incredibly powerful. How are you and why did you bring me here? Sasuke asked in an arrogant tone. The other rookies preformed the Fasipam no Jutsu at Sasuke's arrogance, even though he lost to Naruto his ego was becoming bigger and the others refused to work with him because of it. You're so cool Sasuke-kun, Sakura and Ino said. Ashina felt such disappointment from seeing how her best friend son turned out, he was a mirror image of his father. Minato was also disgusted with the Achiha and the torment he put his son through because he needed the ego boost. How do you think we got here and who are the two people giving of such strong presences? Choji asked while snacking on a bag of chips. I don't know, the only thing I do know is this situation is going to be very troublesome to deal with, Shikamaru said to his best friend. The talking was broken as Kakashi and Jureya made their way over to Minato to talk. Sensei is that you? Kakashi asked unable to hold back the surprise and joy at seeing his teacher again. The joy soon left him as Minato planted his fist in Kakashi's gut. Sensei why? Kakashi asked as he held his stomach in pain. That was for my son and the crap you put in through, Minato said angrily with his failure of his student. Any response Jureya had been immediately silenced by a look from Kashina with her hair flaring up like a set of nine tails, he knew what the look meant he was in serious trouble. Rather than give him a chance to try and explain his actions Kashina super kicked in between the legs, she was not happy at all with a man she trusted to look after his son and be his godfather. Kashina grabbed Jureya by his ponytail and brought him to face level. That was for throwing my son off a cliff to teach him summoning rather than teach him the right way, along with the seals you placed on our son to make him into a loyal weapon for your sensei, Kashina said in a tone filled with female fury. How did you know that I did that? Jureya asked in between gasps of pain. We also know how you sold out that family who wanted nothing more than for Naruto to become a member of their family, Kashina said. Kashina and Minato had witnessed how a family that came to Konoha had to meet Naruto and taking a liking to him, they were even planning on adopting Naruto into their family. Unfortunately, they sold out by Jiraiya who told his sensei, Hiruzen had the family taken out due to the fact they were influencing Naruto to take a path he didn't want him taking. Jiraiya had told him of the prophecy and he was doing everything he could to make sure he would be loyal to Konoha above all else. Kashina was one of the strongest Kanoichi before leaving active duty because she was pregnant with Naruto, everyone knew to never get on her bad side or you will pay the price. What son? Did the fourth have a child we need to bring him to the village right away so he can live up to his father's legacy? Shinzo said. This sparked other members of the civilian side saying similar things and talking about what gifts they should give to the person. Minato and Kashina could barely hold in their anger at the people talking about showering Naruto with gifts when they took such pleasure at making his childhood a living nightmare. We sacrificed our lives for these hypocrites, what were we thinking at the time? We should have just grabbed Naruto and left the village to its fate, Kashina said to Minato disgusted at how the villagers were acting. That can't be true, Naruto can't be the fourth son. Benito said. The council once again erupted into a shouting match, now that the truth was out the signs was visible to the people. The council wanted the banishment removed and Naruto brought back to the village. They also talked about how they wanted to lavish him with gifts and such to buy his forgiveness. Not only were the gods and Minato and Kashina disgusted by what the council was talking about, but the fire daimyo and his guard were as well. Enough, all attempts to bring Naruto back to the village are a waste of time. He is no longer is this world, Shinigami said annoyed with these foolish mortals. What do you mean? Jiraiya asked. Naruto was captured by a group of cultists and dragged to another dimension, it's impossible to bring him back. His loss also affects the elemental nations because he was the child of prophecy and the nations will have to deal with the fallout. Kami said. What do you mean by the child of prophecy? The fire daimyo asked. He was destined from birth to lead the nations into an era of peace, but because of the banishment it broke the chain and changed the future, Shinigami said. Can't you just choose a new child of prophecy? Kaharu asked. Ami shakes her head no, that is not how it works. The next child of prophecy won't be born for a thousand years from now, Kami said. There is something else you should be aware of because Naruto never fulfilled his role as the child of prophecy, the elemental nations will go through an age of darkness until the next child of prophecy is born, Shinigami said. The council was in shock the one they thought was a demon and useless was the most important person in the nations. One final thing before we leave, tell me Sasuke have you been having trouble activating your special eyes recently? Kami asked in an overly innocent tone of voice. 
Sasu went stiff when the question was asked trying to figure out how this woman knew that. He had been unable to activate his eyes since his battle with the dope over three weeks ago. How do you know about that woman, tell me what you did to me. Sasuke demanded. The shinobi council, fire daimyo and his guard in the room, couldn't believe just how arrogant the brat was, he was demanding things from a being that could destroy him in an instant. Hami chuckled to herself enjoying what will come next. After Naruto beat you in the valley of the end, he put an intricate seal on you to block your eyes from activating, Naruto never took the seal off before he left, and there is no way to remove it now, Kami said. The room was shocked with silence until that was broken by Minato's and Kishina's laughter, Sasuke may have got Naruto banished, but in the end, he had the last laugh in the end. What do you mean only Naruto could remove the seal? Kakashi asked wanting to help his student. Minato could only shake his head in disappointment, disgusted with the favoritism that Kakashi was showing. The seal was set up in a way that it needs three keys to unlock or Naruto himself, the keys were destroyed, and Naruto is out of your reach, meaning the seal is permanent, Kami said. The silence that filled the room after Kami had finished speaking was broken by a shout of anger from Sasuke, who activated the curse seal once again and charged up a jutsu to attack Kami with. Faster than anyone could blink the last Ichiha was slammed face first on the ground by Kami, who was getting fed up with the boy. Why wasn't the curse seal fully sealed away this time? The fire daimyo asked Tsunade. The council blocked me from having it sealed, they didn't want the Ichiha to lose any of his strength, Tsunade replied. The seal won't be a problem anymore, Kami said as she removed the seal from Sasuke's body. Thank you for that. Tsunade said. No problem. Kami replied. Kami gathered the group together with a message that it was time to go. She also wanted to get away from the villagers' stupidity, she and the Shinigami had watched Naruto since he was born and knew if any else were faced with the same challenges, they was they would crumble in an instant. As Kami and her group disappeared, they gave one final look of disappointment and disgust towards the villagers. Enjoy. Naruto began to come around, waking up to find himself in a cave with strange and exotic crystals all around him. The crystals gave off a strange but familiar energy, a closer examination revealed that the energy they gave off was spiritual in nature. What strange crystals, I think I will take some with me, so I can further examine them later on, Naruto thought. Naruto was torn from his thoughts about the crystals and their strange properties when he began to feel odd sensations from his back and his forehead. Ami said my body would undergo changes because of the portal's energy and becoming the ten-tailed dragon, Naruto said aloud to himself. Naruto moved towards the largest crystal in the cave to see what he looked like now, in the reflection he was still wearing the same clothes he was wearing when he went into the portal. He was no longer a human, but an anthropony, his fur was a dark shade of orange. Well his mane was the same spiky blonde while he had ten bushy and fox-like tails that were the same color. Naruto also noticed a horn he had gained with the tip being like the point of a lance, he also had a large pair of wings on his back that were the same color of his fur. Naruto wondered if his wings would respond to his mental commands like moving an arm or leg, it took a few tries, but he was eventually able to move and flex his wings. This is a good start, I will need to practice more before I even think about trying to fly in the air. Okay, now that I got the basics of movement for my new body, let us see if I still have access to my charka. Naruto thought to himself. He sat down on the ground to focus and find the familiar warmth of his charka, he soon found it and let the warmth envelop his body. Naruto was engulfed in a golden glow of his charka, Naruto noticed the change in color and the how his charka seemed stronger than before. Naruto then felt two strange sensations coming from the palms of both his hands, when he looked at them, he saw he had a sun mark on his left hand and a moon on his right. I wonder what these marks mean, maybe there is something in what Kami gave me that can tell me what they are, Naruto said. It was then Naruto could feel another energy coming from himself, but it felt very faint, Naruto decided to mediate further to discover this energy. As Naruto tried to find the strange energy, he dove into his mindscape, he appeared in the crossroads of his mindscape, as Naruto went down the path the energy was coming from, he soon found himself in front of the source of the energy. The energy was coming from a massive orb sitting on a small platform, the energy inside of the orb was constantly swirling about and changing colors at the same time. The orb also had large chains on the orb itself acting as binding to keep the energy from escaping. The orb is the cornerstone from Mickey's castle in Kingdom Hearts 2. As soon as Naruto touched the orb the chains disappeared and the orb lit up the room with a blinding flash. When the light died down Naruto saw he was out of his mindscape and back in the real world. That was weird, Naruto said. I wonder if I can channel the energy now. Naruto asked himself. Naruto concentrated on the energy trying to bring to the surface, the new energy felt spiritual in nature, instead of a combination like Charka was. The energy gathered and appeared at his new horn, the energy was ever-changing colors in his reflection on the crystal. 
Naruto knew he had to train in this new energy to find out its limits. Naruto headed towards the cavern entrance to see where he was and to see if he can gleam any information on the land he found himself in. From what he could see he was in a forest of sorts, the area gave off a calm and relaxed feeling which felt nice to him. Naruto could also sense that the forest gave off like the one he just unlocked within himself. As much as he wanted to explore this new land his instincts told him to wait until he trained his new body and the new energy he had unlocked, going out there without being prepared, could spell disaster for him. Naruto headed back into the cave, but not before placing seals along the entrance to the cave to hide it from any animals and prying eyes. Unbeknownst to Naruto his arrival in this new world did not go unnoticed, the ruler of the land Naruto had found himself in was aware of his arrival. The figure was seeing Naruto to make sure he was not a threat to his people or his land. The figure would keep a close eye on Naruto and when he eventually left the cave sent someone to speak with him. Three weeks later. Time passed by quickly in the cave, Naruto was glad he had fully stocked up on supplies before he left the village. He would need to restock before he traveled anywhere else first though. Naruto had fully adjusted to his new body, he had found that his tails can act like arms picking up and throwing items at will. The training in the cave had also caused his mane and tails to grow out, he had started wearing his mane in a braid to keep it out of his face. Naruto had taken time during training to expand his own techniques from the scroll that Kami had given and further developing his own fighting style. Now was the right time to leave the cave and explore, he had sent out Shikigami to gather information on the land. They had discovered a village little way away from the cave he had been living in for the past few weeks. The village should allow me to restock my supplies and pick up some maps of the world and the surrounding lands. Naruto thought to himself. Naruto moved quickly to the village by tree branch hoping, the forest gave off a calm and relaxed feeling, which was very southing to Naruto. At the same time Naruto got an ancient feeling as well, it said that the forest has been around for a long time. As Naruto was traveling, he came across a large clearing and waiting for him was an old man riding on a mountain goat. The man was immensely powerful from what Naruto could tell, he could feel the power coming off him, but at the same time he knew the old man meant him no harm. The old man was wearing a black robe that covered his entire body and a large pointed hat to cover his head. Naruto decided to greet the man and find out why he was out here. Hello, I going to take a guess you're here to meet me or are you just enjoying the beautiful day outside, Naruto said to the old man with a chuckle. Hello to you as well, welcome to Elfil my young pony, the old man replied. Our leader sent me out to meet you and escort you to him, he would very much like to meet the pony who suddenly appeared in our land. Sorry please allow me to introduce myself name is Jedfrig, I am the supreme sorcerer of Skellig. This only confirmed what Naruto had thought, he had felt someone's eyes upon him, but could not tell where they were. Our king saw your arrival in our kingdom from the portal that opened up, he knew that you didn't have any evil intentions towards our land. When you did not come out of the cave, he kept an eye on it until today, Jedfrig said. Jedfrig remembered what his king told him about Naruto, he showed him and the other elders Naruto's arrival and quickly calmed any fears about Naruto being a threat to their land. The king told them Naruto was a hero who had come to help fight against the cultists and the monsters that are plaguing not only their lands, but all the lands. He also described Naruto as having a pure heart despite having a very dark and cruel upbringing. Jedfrig was pulled from his thoughts by Naruto calling him, Jedfrig could easy tell that Naruto was enormously powerful. He had met with Princess Celestia in the past during peace talks between the two lands, and from what he could sense from the stallion in front of him, he rivaled Celestia in power. From what he could sense coming from Naruto, he was close to her level of power. If you don't mind, we can head out to meet with the king, he has been waiting to meet you. Jedfrig said to Naruto. Naruto nodded his head in agreement and motioned Jedfrig to lead on towards the village. As the two entered the village Naruto noticed the residents wore cloaks and hats like Jedfrig. The people looked like humans, but Naruto noticed that they had long pointed ears, Naruto could also feel that they had the same energy that he had unlocked in the cave. As the two of them walked through town he noticed that he was getting strange looks from the villagers, this did not surprise Naruto too much since he was a stranger in their lands. In Konoha he only received looks of hated and disgust any time he went out, so looks of curiosity were something new to him. Naruto and Jedfrig soon reached a massive cherry blossom tree, the tree's size matched the size of the boss summons and Kurama. Naruto could also see different creatures that are believed to be myths such as centaurs and satyrs. Naruto also noticed small creatures that reminded him of fairies, they each gave of a different elemental feeling, few felt like the wind, while others felt like water. The fairies from Berserk. Jedfrig if you don't mind me asking what those are flying creatures, they look like fairies. Naruto asked. Jedfrig chuckled a little, they are fairies, they along with other creatures, make Alphil their home. Some have tribes outside of this land while others came here to escape from the darkness that plagues them, Jedfrig said. 
As Jedfrig started telling Naruto about the fairies and the other creatures that make this land their home, Jedfrig stopped the conversation because of the sound of horns playing, signaling the coming of the king. A swarm of swirling cherry blossoms soon appeared, the swarm moved towards the throne and died down, revealing an imposing figure. The king is Flower Storm Monarch from Berserk. Welcome Naruto Uzumaki to Elfum, please call me Dan-An, Dan-An said. Naruto at once bowed to Dan-An as a sign of respect, he could already tell that Dan-An was immensely powerful, and she also had a strong connection with nature. Would say I am surprised you know my name, but Jedfrig told me that you were aware of my presence in your land, Naruto said. Yes, I felt the energy from the dimensional tier and the energy coming from you. Check your mind seeing your memories and check the purity of your soul to make sure you were not a threat, Dan-An said. Naruto nodded his head in understanding at why Dan-An did that, he was protecting his people, which to Naruto was the sign of a good leader. Dan-An explained to Naruto the different classes of ponies from unicorns that have horns that grant them access to magic, pegasus that have wings to fly in the air, and earth ponies that have neither but have tremendous strength. You are an Alicorn which is a combination of all three classes, the class is also a symbol of royalty in the pony's homeland of Equestria. There are only three other Alicorns in existence they are Princess Celestia, Princess Luna, and Princess Candence, Dan-An said. Dan-An also told Naruto of Equestria's history from its founding to present day, he also told Naruto about the Nightmare Moon incident which stood out to Naruto due to the fact he walked a thin line and came close to falling into his own inner darkness. Naruto could relate in a way to Celestia when she had to banish her sister, it probably felt like having to tear out your own heart and stomp on it, because that's what it felt like to him when Kurama died who was a brother to him. Since you saw my memories, do you have any information on the group that is causing problems in this world? Naruto asked. Yes, I am familiar with the group you speak of, they made up of the cruelest and darkest being, that includes demons and other monsters. They also wield a twisted form of magic called Blight, the energy can corrupt and twist everything from people to animals and the land itself, Dan-An said. Is there anything else you can tell about the group, do you know any of the high-ranking members or the leader of the group? Naruto asked. No, I am afraid I don't have answers to either of your questions, Dan-An said. Dan-An informed Naruto of what was known about the group and tells Naruto the monsters they have summoning in through portals. Naruto places his hand underneath his muzzle as he processed the information his brain was running at top speed to understand everything. At the same time, he was thinking about what his next move was going to be, what he initially planned was to travel the lands and pick up any information on the cultists and the monsters. Anan could easily see the gears turning in Naruto's mind planning out his next move. Naruto I can see from your expression on your face you are planning what to do next, I would like to extend an offer you, Danan said. What's the offer that you have in mind? Naruto asked. The offer is to stay here and be trained on how to use your magic, since you have no experience in it, Denan said. Thank you for the offer, I will gladly accept your offer I experimented with my magic in the cave, but having a real teacher would very nice to have. Naruto said. Denan smiled at Naruto he knew from what he saw in his memories that Naruto lost the ability to trust others in his village when he was eight. He trusted no one to have his back except for Kurama and always had his guard up, never allowing anyone to get close to him as that family did. He is trying to relax himself because he knows he can relax around us, but some habits are hard to break epically ones you have done for so long, Dan-An thought to himself. I'm glad that you chose to accept our offer to stay, I will have Jedfrig show you to the home we had set up for the duration of your stay, Dan-An said. Six months later. It had been six months since Naruto started his training under the elves, he had learned about controlling his own magic to creating his own spells. Naruto enjoyed his time training with the elves and soon made friends with everyone, the kids enjoyed the stories of the pranks he pulled off in the village. The adults had enormous respect for Naruto for going through what he did and not falling into darkness. Naruto soon felt it would be time to head out and start wandering the lands to gain information on the cultists and the monsters creatures that appeared in the land. He also planned on setting up a contact system so that way when he met with any of the land's leaders, he could send them information on the cultists and monsters they he learned, and at the same time if they needed help, they could contact him at any time. Once he was done exploring the outer lands, he planned to go to Equestria to meet with Princess Celestia, he planned to make Equestria his home once was done exploring the lands. Anan helped Naruto contact Princess Celestia through letters, Elfilm and Equestria were on good terms with one other. The letter explained how he came to Elfilm and information about himself. He left out the fact he was an Alicorn and the fact he came from another dimension because he was unsure if Celestia would believe him or not. He did promise himself to tell Celestia the truth when they met though. In the letter he wrote about the cultists and their leader hiding in the shadows, Naruto also wrote about the monsters and their connection to the cultists. He was unsure if Celestia already had this information or not but decided to send it anyways. 
one final thing included in the letter was a necklace with a sun-shaped charm, the charm will allow Naruto to send scrolls directly to Celestia at any time. This way any time gains any latest information on either the cultists or the monsters he can send Celestia a copy of the information right away, and at the same time he could receive messages from her as well. The necklace works in the same way as dragon messaging. Naruto soon finished saying his goodbyes to the friends he made during his time training in the village, the elves were first wary of him being an outsider, but they quickly warmed up to him. The kids were the first to do that through the stories Naruto would tell about his missions that he did and the pranks he pulled on the villagers. Naruto was standing in Dan Ann's throne room to say goodbye and give thanks to the kind monarch for everything she had done for him. Naruto was wearing the same outfit as when he first landed in Elfholm. Have you decided where you are headed to first? Dan Ann asked. Yes, I learned from my Shikigami the zebra nation is facing a major crisis caused by an unknown monster. The monster emits a poison mist that has spread throughout the land, Naruto said. Naruto had sent his Shinigami out across the world to gather information on the different nations and anything on the cultists and monsters that they could find. After he said all his goodbyes Naruto headed out with the zebra nation as his first stop and his first encounter with the monsters that roam the lands. The edge of the zebra nation. It had been few days since he left Elfholm, but Naruto finally reached the edge of the zebra nation. Naruto could already feel the mist already hitting him, the mist did not affect him because of his body's natural healing ability. This is an awfully bad sign if the mist could be felt from the edge of the land, it must be even worse further inward. Hope the zebras have some way to counteract the mist. Naruto said. From what information he had gathered the mist did not kill you outright it slowly weakened you leaving you vulnerable to attack. The effects only lasted while you were in the mist itself, and the mist could disperse through fire, using a torture of bone fire will remove the mist from that area, if the fire burns. As Naruto moved across the land, he discovered various footprints from different monsters, these, and along with traces from the monsters, would allow him to find and identity the creatures. The tracks were lighting up in a green color because of the scout files, they are a unique brand of fireflies they change color, depending on what scent they came across. They swarmed on tracks or any residue of monsters and any plants that may prove useful. Naruto followed the tracks into a wooded area, the tracks showed a large pack of small monsters and one set of large tracks, which must have been the alpha leaders. Naruto stopped in a large clearing because of the reaction from his scout flies, they had swarmed upon a scrap of flesh, but were turning blue. That's not good, for the scout flies to turn blue means that this flesh came from an elder dragon, Naruto thought to himself. Elder dragons were monsters who wielded incredible power, it is believed they had the power to destroy the world. Naruto was pulled from his thoughts by the sound of footsteps approaching his location, thinking it could be a local, but taking no chances, Naruto kept one hand close to the sword resting on his waist. As Naruto suspected it was a female zebra wearing animal skins for clothing, she also had various gold jewelry from rings on her neck to hoop earrings. She had the Amazon-like body, and her mane was in a mohawk fashion. Who are you stranger and what brings you to this especially during time of crisis? The female zebra asked. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, I came here to investigate the rumors of the creature plaguing this land and put an end to it, Naruto replied. The female zebra was surprised at Naruto's answer, her and the other tribes had investigated what was causing the mist. They found the creature and despite their best efforts they were unable to drive off the creature. My name is Zalika, I know the creature you speak of, Zalika said. Before the two of them could continue their conversation, they were suddenly attacked by a large group of reptiles-like creatures moving towards them on all fours. They were Guros, they were coated in the mist to weaken their prey. Guros from MHW. Monsters that are known to attack in packs, using the deadly vapor of the rotten veil to their advantage. They are known for crippling targets with their paralyzing fangs. Naruto quickly grabbed a scroll hanging on his waist and summoned out a pair of twin swords, sword rapiers from MHW, and got into a basic stance to prepare for the monsters. The blades were naturally imbued with a water element, which is what the creatures were weak to. They have a bite that can stun so you so be careful, since they are coated in mist, they can use that to weaken us as well, Naruto said to Zalika. Zalika nodded her head in understanding having fought these creatures before. Between the two of them they made short work of the creatures, as they started to catch their breath, a loud noise came the woods, signaling the fight was not done yet. From the woods appeared a larger version of the creatures they were just fighting. Great Guros from MHW, a monster that scavenges for meals dropped from the Coral Highlands. It acts as the alpha leader of a Guru's pack and sports giant fangs that paralyze its prey. Naruto and Zalika just prepared themselves for round two against the creature. 
Naruto moved quickly jumping up and spinning down Great Goro's back in a wheel-like motion striking the beast with his blades the entire way. Zalika quickly followed up with a set of quick strikes, with her daggers against Great Goro's head doing critical damage. Naruto quickly responded with a combo of his own. Naruto fired of around water bullets at the Great Goro's, the bullets knocked the monster on its side, leaving it open to Naruto's and Zeke's joint attacks. Naruto seized an opportunity and mounted the monster's back, he did not do the traditional mounting attack, but stirred the great Goro's into a wall when it charged forward to shake off Naruto. The impact with wall stunned the monster Naruto ready to water spell to use on great Goro's, the spell formed spears of water from the air surrounding him and had them piece through the monster's hide. With one final cry the great Goro's fell over on its eye dead from the battle with Duo, he smiled at his partner and made sure she was okay. Naruto quickly sheathed his blades on a holster on his lower back and turned to his partner with a smile on his face, the female zebra proved that he was very skilled and handy with her daggers. Thank you for your help with the monsters, Naruto said to Zalika. You are most welcome, your skill with the blade is most great indeed just what my people could use in our time of need, Zalika said, forgive my lack of skill in writing rhymes. Naruto started sealing away the bodies of the monsters so that he can process them later, certain body parts can be used in the creation of new weapons and armor. The organs can be used to make potions and other medicines when mixed with the right herbs. Zalika was impressed by Naruto's skill with his blades and how he easily dispatched the monsters. She could not help but wonder how he knew so much about the creatures in the first place. I must ask a favor from you can you come with me to meet the leader of my village, she will want to meet the one who can take out the creatures so easily. She would also like any information you have on the monsters that you have, Zalika asked. That is okay with me, before I met up with you, I found tracks of an extremely dangerous monster. It is on a completely different level than the one we just fought against, Naruto replied. It did not take them long to reach Zalika's village, it was what you would expect from the tribal zebra nation with huts making up the village. The zebras themselves looked to be in rough shape from the constant struggle with the monsters. Naruto noticed they were giving strange looks, probably because they are wondering why a pony has come to their village. The monsters have already done a number on this village, it almost reminds me of Wave Country during Gato's control, Naruto thought to himself. Naruto and Zalika soon reached the hut of the village chief's hut, as they got closer however, Naruto's tracker flies swarmed on what looked like cloth hanging out to dry outside of the hut. What are those strange bugs doing and why are they turning blue? Zalika asked Naruto. The bugs are scout flies I use them to track monsters and other creatures, they glow blue in the presence of anything that came from or was made by an elder dragon. They track the monsters sent from tracks and other things until they can lead me to the monster, Naruto said. What are elder dragons? Zalika asked. Elder dragons are the top of the monster chain, they each have unique powers and abilities. They are also believed to have the ability to destroy the world which makes them an exceptionally large threat, Naruto said. Zalika and the other zebras listening to the conversation were very afraid from hearing Naruto's description. Naruto felt a pulse coming from his monster journal, signaling that a new page was unlocked and quickly opened to the new page. The creature is Valhazak, Valhazak MHW. The grotesque elder dragon that inhabits the deepest part of the rotten veil. It uses the fatal vapor of the veil in what is a symbiotic relationship. All journal entries will appear the same as in the Monster Hunter game universe. The monster is weak to the fire and dragon element, that's good to know. I don't have weapons with the dragon element, but I do have a fire element great sword, Naruto said. I should thank you for helping us get rid of the creature plaguing our land, but I can't help but wonder why you are doing this in the first place, a voice from the hut spoke to Naruto. My name is Rusum, I am the leader of this village and the Plains Walker tribe, she said with a firm tone of voice. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, wandering pony and monster hunter. I came here because I heard of a strange creature causing problems to your land, Naruto replied. Rasum said nothing at first, she had been listening to the conversation about the creature, the pony was confident he could fight it. She would put her trust in him for her village's sake. No of its lair, the fight will not be an easy one because of the location. The creature nest is filled with the mist making the fight even more difficult, Rasum said. I figured it wouldn't be an easy battle, but regardless the creature's poison will destroy this country and others if it's not stopped. I have some gear that will protect me from the mist's effects, Naruto replied. Rasum nodded her head and understanding come into my hut, I will show you the creature's lair, the map I have will show you the fastest route to the cave. I also have a few potions to give you to aid you in your fight, Rasum said. Thank you for the help, anything will be greatly appreciated, Naruto said. As Rasum got the potions ready for him Naruto put on his poison-resistant gear, the gear looked like a regular set of clothing, but was heavy modified. 
the pants had enchantment on them to stop the buildup of the mist, the gloves and chest piece had fire boosting enchantments to strengthen fire attacks, and finally the helmet had special filters to block out any poison in the air. The weapon he was using was called Red Wing, Red Wing from MHW, he had made it during his time with the elves, his was made using standard metals and ores, while the one in his book was made with Rathalos parts. What is that weapon you just brought out? Zalika asked Naruto curious as to the weapon resting on Naruto's back. It's a great sword called Red Wing, the blade is imbued with a fire element, which is what Valhazak is weak to, Naruto replied. Naruto placed his slinger on his left arm, the slinger is a hunter's tool that fires out various pods that range from flash pods that blinds monsters to bomb pods which explode on contact. The sling also has a grappling hook attachment to reach high places or to get out of sticky situations. Naruto, I have finished making the potions and marking the path to the cave, Rusum said. Thank you, I will head out immediately the sooner I take out Val, the sooner things can go back to normal for you and your people, Naruto said. One thing that will always be true about Naruto is his willingness to help others in their time and need. Naruto knows he cannot help everyone by himself, but he can lend a hand to those in need. Naruto exited the hut and moved towards the path that would lead him to the cave. He would move fast to not waste any time. It did not take long to reach the dragon's lair, before entering the cave Naruto went through his items to see what he would put on his belt for quick access during the fight. He loaded his slinger with flame pods to disperse the mist during the fight, with flash pods as backup to blind and confuse Val if needed. Naruto also made sure his blade was fully sharpened for the fight. As Naruto entered the cavern, he noticed strange pools of what looked like water and small pools on the ground. Naruto approached one of the pools with a branch he had pulled off a nearby plant. As soon as the plant touched the water the plant started to sizzle and burn when he pulled the plant back out the end that was in the water and examined it, Naruto noticed the end was burned, meaning the water was a form of acid. I will have to avoid the pools during the fight if I get knocked into the pools the acid will eat through my armor quickly, Naruto said. The cave where the fight takes place is the same as in the MHW game. Naruto continued down the path until he reached a large cavern, he noticed large stalactites hanging from the ceiling. He could use them by hitting them with pods and dropping on Valhazak to damage and stun the dragon. Naruto followed the trail to a small cave entrance with abnormally thick vines growing floor to ceiling, Naruto continued onward, making a path through the vines by pushing them to the side. Inside the cavern Naruto found a massive pile of corpses made from various monsters, he recognizes them as monsters he has seen in different encounters since he started traveling. As he got closer to the pile a pack of Guros appeared coated in the mist, Naruto readied himself to take out the small fry before dealing with the main threat. When he was about to launch an attack, a large arm appeared from the pile and slammed down on one of the Guros. After that, a powerful suction wave pulled all the mist into the pile, including the mist coating the Guros. Then a large monster appeared from the pile, it was a large dragon-like creature wearing the torn and damaged skin of another monster over its own body. Hami damn, you are one ugly son of a bitch, Naruto spoke aloud seeing Valhazak for the first time. Valhazak gave off a loud roar, then launched itself at Naruto, Naruto quickly dodge rolled to the right and fired a flash pod at the monster's head. The pod blinded the monster allowing Naruto to run up to its leg and start hacking away, this would bring the monster down and allow him to focus his attacks on Val's head. Naruto ran towards the sides of the cavern to run up the wall and mount Valhazak, this would allow him to weaken the monster even more. Mounting a monster is a hunter's technique where the hunter jumps and lands on the creature, then moving to one of three critical areas to attack. The spots are the head, the middle of the back, and the tail. After that, a hunter then needs to clear off the scales or hardened flesh with knives to expose the soft flesh underneath, then you can unleash a critical blow against the creature. All the while the monsters will try to buck you off one way or another. As soon as Val was in reach Naruto made his move and jumped on Val and moved towards its head to do the most damage as possible. At the same time Val started bucking and slamming into walls to get Naruto off. Despite Val's best efforts Naruto was able to clear the scales and expose the flesh Naruto unleashed a powerful combo knocking the creature to ground. Naruto moved in focusing on the head for maximum damage, using a mixture of light and heavy attacks on the beast. Val was not down for too long and soon got back up on its feet, Val unleashed a power roar distorting Naruto. Val followed up with a powerful charge attack the first one misses, but the second catches Naruto on the dodge. The attack slammed him into the wall, he was lucky he avoided falling into the acid pools that surrounded the cavern. Nuts, that hurt, Naruto said as the charge slammed him into a wall. Naruto then noticed Val had stood up on his hind legs and was sucking in air, Naruto knew whatever Val was doing it was not good news and decided to make some distance between the two by grappling up to the selling and channeling chakra into his feet to stick to the selling. 
as soon as he landed on the selling Val unleashed a massive breath attack starting at its feet and spreading out from there, Naruto waited until the attack was done, then threw a kunai with an explosive tag towards a stalactite and dropping down on Val. Val was stunned by the impact which gave Naruto the chance to unleash a jutsu upon the stunned creature. Fire style great chaos fireball, Naruto roared as a massive fireball left his mouth and exploded upon hitting Val, small lava pools also formed at the point of detonation. This caused Val to let loose a horrible scream of pain, as all the fire did massive damage. In vengeance to his attack Val unleashed a massive breath attack that seemed to reach across the entire room. Naruto could tell Val was on its last legs, it had wounds on its body and was slowing doing more. The attack slammed into Naruto throwing into one of the acid pools, Naruto at once jumped out of the pool, he could feel the acid eating away at his armor. It's time for the final push, Naruto thought to himself. Ball collapsed on the ground if stunned, but Naruto could tell it was pulling in miasma towards itself. Naruto rushed towards the head to get strikes in before it pops back up, but before he could Val let loose a miasma-filled explosion. Naruto quickly substituted himself with a large boulder and fell back to down a potion and heal from the damage. Naruto began channeling and storing a large amount of energy inside Red Wing, he planned on mounting Val once more and unleashing the stored energy in a massive blast. Naruto prepared to mount Val for the final time and end the creature once and all. But the loud battle cry Naruto ran towards the best jumping into the air and using the grappling hook to mount the creature. Naruto jumped on the head and started hacking away the scales to reveal the soft flesh. Now die you bastard Naruto exclaimed thrusting the blade deep into Val's skull and unleashed all the stored energy inside the blade. With one final roar Val has a collapsed on the ground dead. That was a difficult fight, I am going to have to practice more with combing my hunter and ninja skills. Naruto thought to himself. The miasma in the cave and the pools of acid water did not make the battle any easier. Naruto sealed Valhazak's body away to be examined for parts for armor and weapons later, certain parts of the monsters could be used in making new weapons and armor. The journal also had recipes for healing items and other things that could be made from the monster parts. Now that Val is dead the miasma should start to fade away and the zebras should be able to recover from this terrible event. Naruto said. It did not take Naruto long to reach the cave entrance, the sun was beginning to set, but Naruto could easily see that the miasma was disappearing quickly from the land. The cave entrance also gave Naruto a beautiful view of the savanna land. This is a magnificent view, I will have to sketch it later on. Naruto thought to himself. Naruto had learned how to draw and do other forms of art to help him relax from all the stress the village put him under. He remembered the family that taught about art and music, he remembered all the joy he had with them and the pain that followed later. Naruto made the return trip to the village in record time, the miasma had already faded away from the village, raising the spurts of the inhabitants. As soon as they saw him, they had broken out into cheers for him. Naruto was a bit nervous by all this being so used to receiving only negative emotions from the villagers, this was completely foreign to him. Everyone in the village was outside clapping and cheering for him, Naruto could only smile awkwardly and wave back to them unsure what to do. Rasam quickly appeared silencing the cheers to she could talk to their hero. We can't thank you enough for helping us rid the monster that has plagued our people, Rasam said. Naruto said nothing at first, he just rubbed his hand behind his head in embarrassment from all the praise he was receiving. I am glad I could help, I came here to investigate the rumors of the strange creature appearing in your lands and gain information on it, Naruto replied. Before you leave please join us tonight in celebration tonight for your victory against the creature, Rossum said. Later that night. There was a massive bonfire going in the middle of the village with everyone dancing around it or just drinking and being merry. This was an enormous difference from the haggard looking zebras that he first saw. Naruto could not keep a smile from his face from the scene before him, it reminded him of wave country after Gato's death. He was glad he was able to help the zebras, but at the same time he knows this is just the beginning of his journey. I hope you and my parents are watching this my friend, I haven't forgotten my promise to you. Naruto said as he looked up to the stars thinking of his brother figure. Enjoy. It has been two years since Naruto had been brought to this world. He had been constantly traveling from one place to another hunting monsters and fighting cultists. He had several kinds of monsters in his travels, each one unique in some form, and each one added more information in his book. Naruto thought about the friends and allies he had made in his travels, he had stopped in a town for supplies or to gather information, only to find out a monster attacking the village or cultists causing problems for the townsfolk. Naruto chuckled aloud to himself thinking how he did the same thing back in the elemental nations. He somehow inspired people in their darkest moments. The monsters he had discovered were broken into various branches based on the type of wyvern class they fell into. The only exception being elder dragons which were a class of their own. 
Right now, Naruto was in the feline nation of Thindera, the nation was famous for being more technology advanced than the other nations. He had entered the country a few days ago and was already hearing rumors about monster attacks from a few villages he passed through. He also heard about how the country was recovering from an invasion attempt lead by the dark sorcerer Mumra. The country was hurting from the lives lost, including their king who was killed by a traitor. They were eventually able to free themselves and drive off Mumra and his allies, with help of the land's most skilled warriors the Thundercats. Currently he was just headed to a nearby village to investigate rumors of a pair of monsters terrorizing the village. A loud roar made Naruto rush towards the village, the monsters attacking the village were Rathalos and its mate the Rathian. Naruto acted quickly throwing a few explosive tags at the monsters to draw them away from the village, he saw a large lake nearby and headed towards it to set the stage for the fight. Naruto started off focusing on the Rathian first keeping the Rathalos busy with clones, drew his water sabers and launched himself at the monster, striking quickly against the monster, following up with launching piecing pods at Rathian. The pods were strong enough to go straight through the scaled height of the monster. Naruto prepared a water jutsu to bring down the Rathian in the air, water style. Water cyclone the attack slamming into the Rathian in the air, forcing it to the ground and stunning it as then followed up with a water spell, the spell formed a whirlpool with white rings on the incest, the whirlpool had blades on the inside rings to trap and damage the Rathian. The Rathian was on its final legs when Naruto leapt into the air and performed a forward spin attack striking from head to tail, the Rathian gave one last roar before failing to the ground for good. The Rathalos was enraged by his mate's death and quickly moved towards Naruto revenge on its mind. Water style. Water shock wave Naruto said the wave slamming hard against the monster and slamming to the ground, Naruto rushed towards the fallen beast striking with the sabers moving from head to tail striking wherever was open to attack. The Rathalos moved towards the air hovering in place to unleash his fire breath upon Naruto, reacting quickly Naruto fired off a flash pot at the Rathalos face to blind it and make it crash into the ground. Naruto started hacking away at the tail of the monster, the tail functioned as a deadly weapon that sliced into its prey and weakened them through poison found in the spikes. Naruto charged up the blades before performing a multi-hit combo that severed the tail. The Rathalos was quick to recover catching Naruto in its claws and throwing him across the area and into the lake. Naruto retaliated with another water jutsu, water style. Water dragon the jutsu forming a giant water dragon that crashed into the Rathalos and slammed it into the ground. Wanting to finish the fight Naruto placed two large barrel bombs next to the stunned creature, then moved back to fire a bomb pot at the barrels. A loud explosion tore through the area, followed by the death cry of the Rathalos. Sealing both away for later Naruto headed towards the town to see if they needed help of any kind. As he got near the town entrance, he saw an older looking feline dressed in simple clothes waiting for him. I'm guessing you are the mayor or leader of this village? Naruto asked. Yes, I am, on behalf of my village we can't thank you enough for defeating those two dragons. They have been terrorizing my village and its people for days now, ever since they first appeared, the village elder replied. Naruto rubbed the underside of his chin and thought I am glad I could help. Have you heard of any other monsters in the area? I am trying to gather as much information on them as possible so I can pass it along to others, Naruto said. The elder nodded his head in understanding and motioned Naruto to follow him. I have heard rumors from travelers and merchants about monsters being spotted in a few spots, I have a map in my home that will show you the locations of the monsters. Naruto nodded his head in understanding thank you, the more information I have the on monsters the better then I can focus on getting out to the public as fast as possible. Naruto thought about how each time he met a monster the more data he gained, it ranged from attack patterns, weaknesses, to where the monster makes its home. When Naruto entered the elder's home, he noticed he had the map spread out and placed markers on what he thought to be the monster locations. I only know of two monsters still around in this area, the first one is in a molten lava cavern. The cats of have seen it described it a massive beast made of stone. The other one is in the desert canyon area it uses a powerful sound attacks to disorientate anyone who gets close to it. Naruto nodded his head in understanding, he then brought out an artifact from the vault in Yuzu. The artifact was called the Whirlpool Slate, it is a multifunctional device. He was currently using it to scan the map so he could bring it up at any time on the device, this way he could check his location at will. The elder saw Naruto holding a strange rectangular device in his hand and asked Naruto what it was I am curious my boy, what is that strange device you are holding? Naruto quickly explained it was built by my family, but put in storage when our land was attacked by invaders. Only now it's back in service, but I must figure out all of its functions on my own, since the instructions were damaged. Looking at the map the nearest monster was the one that used sound attacks, thankfully I have armor that should help block out the sound attacks, Naruto thought to himself. Before I go can you show me where I can pick up supplies and sell some unwanted thing? 
I try to stock up on supplies whenever I can, Naruto asked the village elder. Yes, I can we don't a vast choice of items since we are a small village. To see a better variety, you would have to travel to the capital they have the largest market in Thundera. After he finished stocking up on supplies and thanking the elder for the information, Naruto headed out to the first monster he would fighting against. The village gave him a happy send-off with everyone wishing him luck in his fights. Naruto moved at a brisk pace to get to the area where the first monster has made its home, he wants to get there quickly before anyone gets hurt or killed. Soon enough Naruto enough here reached the area known as Red Canyon, Naruto then took the time to get his armor and weapon ready for the battle. Naruto put on the Basil Helm Alpha, High Metal Male Alpha, Basil Vambrises, they would block out the monster's sound attacks. He decided to wait on putting on any more armor and selecting a weapon until he knows what he is dealing with. Naruto then moved into the canyon area looking for tracks or marking that will lead the monster, he sees tracks from herbivores and smaller monsters, but not the ones he is trying to find. It was a few minutes later that he found the first set of tracks of the new monster, Naruto followed the tracks further into the canyon. Soon he had followed the tracks to a large clearing, the clearing had a small ache and a medium plateau, with a worn hill path going up the left side. With all the tracks he found he was able to id the monster as a mana blows. Naruto opened his journal to the new page to read the description of the monster. The mana Ciro's desert dwelling wyvern able to burrow swiftly through sand. It puts its horn to lethal use with a charging thrust, and while it possesses no breath attack, its roar is loud enough to spill human eardrums. The journal showed the mana blows was weak to the thunder element, Naruto decided to use his thunder sword and shield for the fight. The weapon collaborates best with fast-moving enemies and at the same time allows the hunter to move quickly during the fight. The equip the Kadachi Coil Alpha and the Shock Charm 3 for added thunder damage to mana blows. The ground beneath Naruto's feet started to shake, signaling the start of the battle, Naruto also slotted sonic bomb pods in his launcher. They would release sonic waves into the ground that would force mana blows to surface from underground. Trigger Mana Blows Opening Cut Scene. Naruto grabbed his weapon the Thunder Edge 2 and stood ready for Mana Blows to make the first move. The Mana Blows lowered its horn and charged towards Naruto, hoping to spear him for large damage. Naruto dodge rolled to the right and fired off a flash pod blinding the monster, Naruto rushed forwards, unleashing a powerful combo on the monster and finishing with a jump in the air, charging the shield with lighting Charka, then slamming it down on Mana Blows inflicting severe damage. Mana Blows struck back with a tail slam that sent Naruto flying across the battlefield and crashing into the canyon wall. Naruto shook his head to clear the stars from his eyes from the blow. Naruto rolled out of the way from the charging monster, Naruto fired of a lightning bolt spell at the Mana Blows while it was recovering from hitting the wall from the charge. Naruto then followed up with a lighting jutsu lighting style. Piercing Thunder spears the attack, launching several spears at the monster exploding on impact. The monster roars in pain the spears causing major damage and pushing it back. Naruto rushed towards the beast focusing on the head to do critical damage. Naruto dodged Rawl to the right to avoid the claw swipe, but got slammed by the Mana Blow's spear-like horn, the attack cut deeply into the armor, but still managed to halt together. Naruto shot a flash pot at the monster to down a potion to recover from his wounds. Mana Blow's jumped into the air and hovered in a single spot, it fired off a screech attack towards Naruto. Naruto dodged out of the way the attack shattering the boulder the attack hit. Mana Blows continued firing off sonic blasts creating small craters in the area. Naruto readied another jutsu to fire at the monster lighting style. Crashing Thunderbolts the technique brought several thunderbolts from the sky crashing down against Mana Blows. The attack disoriented the Mana Blows, it landed on the ground then charged towards Naruto, with its horn lowered trying to impale Naruto. He rolled to the right and struck the monster as it passed by him. Naruto charged lighting Charka into his sword and ran towards the monster, he then swung his sword, releasing the charge energy in the form of Sickle Moon's strike against the monster. The attack manages to stun Mana Blows. Naruto runs straight for the head, unleashing a final combo before leaping air into the air and smashing his shield charged with lighting Charka into its head, finishing it off. Naruto seals away his armor and places his weapon on his back for protection, he then walks towards the corpse and seals it away to be processed later. Naruto got ready to move on to the next hunt, he felt that he was not alone in this area he could feel someone's eyes watching him. Naruto could not see the presence that was spying on him, he could only assume where he or she was, since he is unable to pinpoint his location. Naruto headed out to the next area guessing that he would be followed, he didn't like not knowing who was there, but there still was another monster left to take care of. As soon as Naruto left the area his spy disabled the invisibly technique he had on himself. So that's the infamous monster hunter, he is skilled just as the rumors say. The feline spy was Tigra's older brother to the current king of Thundera. Like many others he heard the rumors of a pony wandering the lands hunting the monsters that had appeared suddenly out of nowhere. 
it was believed that they are late to the cult that has been causing problems in various nations, but nothing has been confirmed. The beeping noise drew Tigra from his thoughts, noticing it came from his radio he answered, knowing it's the base looking for an update. Tigra here. It's Shatia, were you able to deal with the monster in the canyon area? No, the monster hunter beat me to it. He is as skilled as the rumors say, Tigra was impressed with the pony he is very skilled. So, the hunter is here in Thundera, just as the rumors say, that's great news for us, since we could use his help with the monster we are dealing with. It was able to take down Panthro who is easily the strongest amongst us, Chitara said. Tigra knew what creature she was referring to, the monster had taken residence in a volcanic cavern network. It wouldn't have been a problem for anyone, except the cavern is rich in minerals and materials. This made the cavern especially important to everyone especially the town nearby. Panthro was investigating the cavern with a team and was attacked by the monster, Panthro stayed behind to give the soldiers time to escape the beast, but suffered the worst damage from his actions. He is headed towards the other monster in the area once he is finished with that hunt, then I will approach him, Tigra said. Okay, I will make Lion-O aware of the new developments that are going on right now, Chitar replied. Tigra sighed to himself and looked out at Naruto's retreating form, I really hope you can help us, Tigra thought to himself. Naruto continued the path towards his next hunt, according to the map the monster had made its home in an old mining cavern. He learned from a few of the villagers that the creature is made of stone, so normal weapons can't pierce its body. They also talked about seeing the monster appear and dive in large pools of molten lava and rock. They also warned of the hostile creatures that inhabit the caves long before the monster appeared, they first thought monster was simply another version of the same creatures, but they were proven wrong when the new monster forced the others out of their territory. They called the creatures kragans, they were made of stone, but had lava-like blood. The feline miners who first met them found that out the hard way, when they destroyed one of the smaller ones with a well-timed hit from a pickaxe. The size of the monsters ranges from ones the size of medium dogs to large houses. Right now, the only things I know about the monster is that it appears to be made of stone, and it also prefers to make its home in molten rock pools, Naruto thought to himself. Naruto discovered that he had reached the mine entrance, there were signs of fighting outside of the entrance with the monster inside. There were scratch marks from two different creatures, one of the marks was glowing because of the tracker flies, but the other wasn't. This was strange to Naruto because the flies light up any monster tracks of any kind, but these ones remain dark. I wonder if these are from the kragans that the villagers warned me about. Naruto continued into the cavern in search of more tracks to id the monster and figure out what the other tracks belonged to. As Naruto entered the cavern, he walked down the path which was lined with support beams on the walls and a mine track on the ground. He didn't see any more of the monster tracks at first mostly just more of the unknown tracks. He collected various pieces of ore from various blue crystals along the path, the ore was an exceptionally good find because he used them to strengthen his weapons. The path soon opened into a massive cavern, this was the miner's main cavern due to the rusted equipment around the area. In the area were also three large lava pools along several smaller ones. There were also many tracks from the monster he was hunting, soon enough he collected enough to identify the monster which is called a Gravius. The large wyvern found in volcanic zones. They have a fiery breath attack and the ability to emit a sleeping gas. They have extremely hard scales that deflect most weapon attack. According to the journal the Gravius is weak to water attacks, I'll use the Great Hammer because that will do more damage to Gravius than my dual blades. It will allow me to hit the monster harder and break through its heavy scale defense, Naruto said. Man. Aqua Hammer 3, Anja Help Alpha, Anja Coil Alpha, Sitsi Male Alpha, Kajak Boots Beta, Water Attack Charm 3. Now that he was ready Naruto began moving towards the largest lava pool. He had seen signs of movement beneath the surface of the lava, signaling that was Gravius' location. As he moved closer to the pool, he noticed a strange creature from the corner from the corner of his eye. Kragan from Borderlands the pre-sequel. Naruto had no time to figure out what the creature was because it rushed forwards and tried to take a bite out of him. Naruto quickly swung his hammer smashing the creature into pebbles. What was that creature? I wonder if the creature makes its home here in the cavern? Naruto thought to himself. The loud rumbling pulled Naruto from his thoughts, the noise coming from one of the larger lava pools. From the pool appeared a much larger version of the creature he just fought also several more of the one he just fought. Badass Kragan from Borderlands the pre-sequel. Acting quickly Naruto summoned several clones to manage the smaller ones while he focused on the large one. The clones took out the smaller Kragans with well-placed explosive tags and bomb pods, the logger Kragan was proving to be more of a challenge, with its body being thicker and harder than the other ones. Naruto ordered the clones that were left to distract the large beast, while he rushed forward to unleash a large Rasengan on the beast, its chest had several cracks on it from repeated hits of explosives and impact of his hammer. 
Naruto fired of a flash pod blinding the creature as he moved forward to strike, the clones laying down covering firing off water bullets to keep the beast off balance until he reached the chest. The Domara Sengen Naruto shouted driving the attack deep into the beast, breaking through its armor shell and tearing into the beast. The monster gave off a loud roar of pain as the force of the Rasengan sent it flying back into the lava pool. The creature appeared once more from the pool, Naruto readied himself to fight, but the creature collapsed on the ground and didn't get back up. Naruto downed a potion to help recover his strength from the fight, he still had the Gravius to deal with, and these strange stone creatures merely delayed him. Naruto approached the largest of the lava pools, ready to fight against a monster living in the pool. Trigger Gravius intro scene. Naruto put on his modified googles, they scanned an enemy target, highlighting weak points on the target. This let him know where to focus his attacks for maximum damage on hunts, they also allowed him to see in the darker poorly lit areas. The main weak points are the head, tail and stomach on the Gravius, the stomach is protected by two layers of scales, both will have to be broken through before reaching the soft flesh underneath, Naruto thought to himself after scanning the monster. The Gravius let loose a powerful roar that shook the cavern signaling the start of the battle. Naruto first fired a flash pot at the Gravius, blinding the creature allowing Naruto to rush forward and start hammering away at its legs. The monster responded with stomping its fight on the ground, Naruto constantly moving back and forth, switching from one leg to the other for maximum damage. The Gravia switched to a charge attack clipping Naruto and slamming into the wall, then hitting ground with a large thump. Naruto quickly got to his feet was forced to grapple up to the selling to avoid another charge attack from Gravius. Naruto seeing his chance struck back with a water jutsu. Water style. Water bullets Naruto cried the bullets cracking the beast's armored scales on impact. Naruto followed up by dropping a stalactite from the selling, making sure to hit the crack scales on Gravius' back. The impact stunning the monster and knocking down on the ground. Naruto focused on Gravois' head for the largest amount of damage, Naruto unleashed mixed combo of light and heavy attacks. He followed up with more water bullets to further pile on the damage. The Gravius got up roaring in anger and pain, it sucked in air before unleashing a massive fire attack that swept over the area, moving from side to side across the room. The attack missed Naruto, but he got hit by the ending burst, he rolled on the ground to put out the embers. Naruto moved to cover to catch his breath and down a potion to help recover his strength from the battle. Naruto examined the monster seeing that the head was broken, he should focus on the other parts to keep up the damage. Naruto jumped back into the fight starting with the tail, he continued to focus on the tail and legs to further weaken the beast. The Gravius roared once more before retreating into the lava pool. Suddenly Naruto's scout flies appeared and were leading Naruto deeper into the cavern, Naruto knew that the Gravius had left the current area, and the flies were leading Naruto to the monster. Naruto knew what the monster was doing, it was retreating to heal from the battle or flee the area. Naruto ran into the tunnels, the tracker files lighting the path to Gravius. He ended up finding Gravius in another large cavern, Gravius was curled up sleeping to recover its strength. This is also a hunter's best chance to do major damage to a monster because of its vulnerable state. Naruto placed two large barrel bombs near the Gravois' head and placed a handful of mines near the bombs to add to the damage. Naruto got behind cover and then launched a bomb pod to trigger the trap. The loud explosion was followed by a loud roar from Gravius, the battle was entering the final stage. Naruto focused on the legs and chest trying to stun the monster once more so he could finish it off. The chest was already damaged from earlier and the bomb trap broke through the remaining layer of hard scales protecting the soft underbelly. After the last combo to the monster's belly, the Gravius tucked its legs underneath its body and lowered itself fully to the ground. Naruto thought something was off, so he held back from charging the monster to see what it was up to. The Gravia soon followed up with releasing a strange gas from underneath its scales, Naruto knew from the journal entry that the monster also could release a sleep gas that when breathed in, puts the victim to sleep. Naruto backed off until the monster finished its attack, from what he could see this battle was over. One last attack should finish off the Gravius. Naruto thought. This attack is a variation of his father's Rasengan that he created, from what he read in his dad's notes his goal was to add his element to the Rasengan, but was never able to do so. He was glad he was able to carry out his dad's dream. Naruto charged up a Rasengan once more, but started charging the attack with a water element, making the orb darken and have small globs of water orbiting around the Rasengan. Water Rasengan Naruto cried out driving the attack into the soft underbelly, the attack dug deep into the monster, ending the monster finally. Naruto sealed away everything he didn't need and the monster for processing later, then he headed towards the cavern's entrance to make his way to the capital to check out the marketplace. He wanted to see if the market had anything he needed for supplies and find out any information on monsters and cultists that may be floating around. 
he could also see if he could gain more information on Thundera for future visits, whether they be hunting related or for personal reasons. Naruto soon reached the entry cavern, he could understand something clearly at last coming through the entrance, and he could also see someone waiting for him as well. From what Naruto could see the figure waiting for him was Tiger Feline waiting for him, he could tell he had no ill intentions towards him. He could tell from his appearance that he was well-trained warrior, he also gave off the air of nobility which he could only assume he was from a noble family. So, you are the one that has been spying on me, I assume you have questions for me? Naruto asked curious as to who this feline was and what he wanted with him. My name is Tigra, spymaster of the Thundercats. First, I want to thank you for dealing with the monsters plaguing our land, Tigra said. Naruto nodded his head in understanding, he had heard of the Thundercats in his travels. They were currently led by the Lion O who was the current king of Thundera. He was forced to take the throne after his father was killed by Mumra minions during an invasion of the capital. The nation is still recovering from the war with the Dark Sorcerer, they also had to deal with the two betrayals from two of their greatest allies. Two of their heroes had chosen to side with the Dark Sorcerer for assorted reasons, one for power and the other for revenge. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, how can I help you? I was sent to deal with the monsters causing problems, but you beat me to that. Rumors about your skill have spread here, I'm glad to see that you are as skilled as they say, Tigra replied. Naruto merely smiled at Tigra and rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment, sometimes it felt weird receiving praise from others, instead of the hate he was used to. I am merely doing what I can to help out those in need, left unchecked these monsters could do untold damage to everyone and everything that they come across, Naruto said. He didn't want to imagine if any of the monsters were left unchecked the damage they could inflict on the world. He had seen the damage that a single elder dragon did to the zebra nation, he could only imagine what the ones he doesn't know about can or will do. Tigra was surprised at how humble Naruto was being, others would be basking in the praise or letting it go towards their heads. Tigra was pulled from his thoughts by his radio sounding off, it was Yatara wanting an update on the situation. Tigra here, what do you need? Lion-O wants to talk with the hunter about hiring him for dealing with a monster in, have you made contact with him yet? Tigra turned towards Naruto knowing that he heard everything and asked him are you okay with that, the base isn't too far away from here. Naruto nodded his head sure, no problem. I rather not let a monster run loose if I can help it. Tigra smiled at Naruto glad that he was willing to help then responded to Chitara yes I have, he is standing right next to me and has heard everything. We meet up at the base to discuss the details of the job. At the outpost. It didn't take the two of them long to reach the outpost, the two of them exchanging stories along the way. Naruto told Tigra about the monsters he has seen so far in his journey. As they approached the entrance the two of them noticed that there were noticed two cats standing outside the entrance of the outpost. One was a male with red hair and tan fur, he was wearing an outfit like Tigra. He also had a golden gauntlet on his right arm and a sword on his back. The female was a member of the cheetah species, she was wearing a tan top with a brown short sleeve jacket with a pair of tan pants to top it off. Lion O and Chitara from Thundercats 2011. The lion was the first to approach Naruto, Naruto knew from Tigra's description that this was his younger brother Lion O and the current king of Thundera. You must be the monster hunter I have heard so much about, my name is Lion O Lord of the Thundercats and current Lord of Thundera. My companion is Yatara fellow member of the Thundercats, Lion O, then held out his hand to shake. Naruto shook his hand and introduced himself the pleasure is mine, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. I assume you heard Chitara say I wanted to ask you to do a job for me, the job as you can guess is hunting a monster plaguing this land. One of my strongest warriors fought it during a routine training mission with several members of the guard. Do you have any descriptions of the beast, anything at all could be helpful to me, Naruto asked hoping to get as much info as possible. Lion O nodded his head in understanding Panthro, the one who was leading the group who first encountered the monster is here at the outpost. He took a beating from the monster, but that was because he tried to hold off the monster to let the guard escape. Naruto was impressed by the fact someone was able to hold their own against a monster, they shouldn't be taken lightly. Some of the monsters had some form of unique ability that makes that much more of a threat. The group entered the outpost and headed towards the room where Panthro was resting in. Naruto got many stares from the felines in the base, they had heard that the mysterious monster hunter was coming to the outpost. They were unsure what to make of the pony, they heard the rumors, but seeing him in the flesh was a different matter altogether. The group reached Panthro's room where he was resting, Lion-O knocked on the door, and the group went in. Panthro formed Thundercats 2011, Naruto could see that he was still recovering from his encounter with the unknown monster in the caverns. Panthro like the others had heard of the rumors of the monster hunter traveling the lands, he has heard all sorts of talk about strange creatures appearing in different countries or figures in strange cloaks causing trouble. 
So, you're the famous monster hunter that I have been hearing about, from what the others have told me you already took care of two of the monsters. The one that I fought against was stronger than those two, so it will not be an easy fight, Panthro said. Naruto nodded his head in understanding it depends on how much information I can get beforehand, the more info I have on a creature, the easier it is for me to put together a battle plan for the fight. Right now, I just need to know the location of the creature and any info on it, then I can start prepping for the fight. He could see that Naruto was a powerful warrior, he would have to wait and see if he was able to defeat the monster. Another thing he liked was the fact he wasn't arrogant, he dealt with many warriors that let their fame go to their heads, or they think they are better than everyone else. Anthro quickly explained what happened in the encounter with a beast, saying how the monster used only fire-based attacks and created a massive explosion that nearly ended his life. Naruto paid attention to the entire story taking notes at different spots, he was already starting to plan out how to approach this fight. Lion-O turned to Naruto I will have one of my guard bring us a map that way I can give you the location. Is there anything I can give you for the fight, the armory can give you any weapons or armor you will need. lion -O asked. He didn't want Naruto too into the fight unprepared, especially since he was dealing with a dangerous monster in their land. He wanted to give Naruto any aid he could, since he was unable to help in the fight itself. Naruto held his chin and thought going over what he would need for the fight, he already had the weapon he would use for the fight. Next step was going over what armor he would use, finally he needed to set up his healing potions and slinger ammo for the fight. First thank you for the offer, I will take you up on it because I plan on making a few items that will help with the fight beforehand. I also need to make sure I have all the med supplies needed for the fight and have quick access to them during the fight, Naruto replied. The others were curious in what Naruto would be making for the fight, they were also impressed with the fact that Naruto was planning instead of rushing off. lion -O was very curious about Naruto, he gave of the feeling of a seasoned veteran. Panthro had gotten the same feeling, he wondered if he was with a military branch at some point. He turned to Naruto Naruto if you don't mind me asking, but did you serve with any form of military, you act like a well-trained warrior or someone who was trained from an early age? lion -O asked. Naruto understood lion -O's curiosity he had been asked that before. I was part of my village's military before I was banished from it. Even before I joined, I was training at an early age. Why were you banished from your village, you are a very skilled warrior from what I have seen during your fight with the Mana Blows and the Gravius. Tigra asked as he and the others were surprised to hear Naruto was banished from his village. He had watched Naruto's battle with the Mana Blows, Naruto had dominated that entire fight, even when he fought against the Kragans and the Gravius in the caverns. Tigra couldn't figure out why his village would want to get rid of him. The official reason for my banishment was because I used excessive force in preventing my teammate from going rouge and joining an enemy village. He was the last member of a clan in my village, they treated him like he was royalty, Naruto explained. So, you were banished because you roughed up a traitor too much. That is the dumbest thing I have ever heard, lion -O exclaimed trying to wrap his head around the fact. Itara looked at Naruto with a curious expression on her face, I don't understand on what you meant, did you mean there was another reason to your banishment? Naruto nodded his head the first was the official reason, but it wasn't the real reason for my banishment. The real reason was there was a group of powerful warriors after me, rather than put themselves at risk they banished me to protect themselves. They figured that they wouldn't be attacked if I wasn't there. The others couldn't hide their shock at what Naruto just said, his own village threw him away just to save their own hides. Sorry Naruto, I didn't mean to reopen any old wounds, Chitara said. Naruto merely waved her off. It's fine I knew from when I first encountered the group while I was away from the village on a mission, they attacked taking out one of the strongest fighters in the village. After that they tried to capture me but failed, I knew the village would put themselves before me. So, after your banishment you made you came to these lands to avoid the group that was after you? Panthro asked. Naruto shook his head at Panthro's question I'm afraid that is not the case, a short while after I was banished a strange group captured by a strange group. I never figured out why they were after me in the first place, though I had had a few ideas why. Can you describe the members of the group, we have been getting reports of strange cloaked figures causing disturbances across Thundera, we also believe that they may have a connection to the monsters appearing in the lands. lion -O asked. Naruto shrugged his shoulders in response, they were wearing black cloaks I couldn't see any of their features that would identify a single member. The higher ranked members have fancy designs on theirs, but that's about it. I am using the shadows of Aharnam as the base design for the cultists, they are what I see in my mind when I think of cultists. That fits the description of the group that has been attacking villages and kidnapping citizens. We have no leads on kidnapped felines, but we know it wasn't for good reasons, Tigra said. 
Agra turned to Naruto remembering something he wanted to ask Naruto speaking of the cultists, there has also been reports of another group collaborating with them, they were described as a close resemblance to the satyrs, but they have a full goat head and fur covered torso. Have you heard of anything like this in your travels? The Goatman from the Diablo game series. Naruto thought about what Tigra was describing, but nothing came to mind no, I am sorry, but I have never encountered anything like what you just described. I will send a message to a few others and see if they recognize what you are describing. Thank you, any help at all is welcomed, Lionel replied. If no one minds I should start prepaying for the fight now, we seem to be getting really off track with all the talking, Naruto said while looking sheepish. The others noticed that they had been talking for a while, Lion-O had Tigra show Naruto the armory so he could start prepping for the fight. Naruto started with making flash and bomb pods for his slinger, next he made trip mines that he could place in the monster's path as a trap for extra damage. Finally, he made some level 2 or high potions, Naruto also made another potion called the frost drink. The potion is designed to help keep a hunter cool in areas that have extremely hot temperatures. All the pre-ping was done it was time to confront the monster, lion -O, and the others wished him luck on the hunt and would remain at the base when for he came back. Naruto thanked them for the supplies and headed out to the cavern that he was shown on the map. As usual Naruto moved at ninja speed to reach the cave not wanting to waste any time, he soon found himself at the cavern entrance with signs of the monster's activity there as well. The claw marks and singed hair confirmed that he was dealing with an elder dragon class monster. Naruto headed into the cavern noticing that like in the earlier cavern that there were small ore deposits around the cavern and there were also small plants in the area too. There were herbs that were used for healing and others that could be processed for ammo for the blowguns. The blowguns were another type of hunter weapon, they fell into the firearm category. The ammo for the guns was made from seeds collected from various plants and gunpowder. The gunpowder was made from plants and certain fish scales, it could be made into three levels of quality. Each level would create ammo in that level, level 1 was the basic ammo or standard type, level 2 allowed you to charge the shot, and level 3 was the highest ammo grade that a hunter could make. I will create a bunch of clones to collect the ore and plants that I need, as well as search the area for more tracks to id the monster, Naruto thought to himself. As Naruto went further into the cave the earth around him soon turned into crystal, he soon reached a massive cavern with a large crystal pillar stretching from the floor to the roof. The area also had a crystal formation that looked like a massive ramp. Naruto examined the crystal pillar he noticed at the base slightly buried in dirt was a skeleton of an unknown monster. This was a good find to Naruto because the bones of monsters are used in weapon and armor forging strengthen. Naruto continued to explore the caverns finding more claw marks that helped hid the monster he was hunting as a Teostra. Brutal elder dragons wreathed in flames that spin blazing fire. Teostra are of such a fierce and deadly nature that their movements are closely monitored. Naruto studied the entry on Teostra, it spoke about how aggressive the elder dragon can be and how territorial it can be. The monster's main weakness are water and dragon element weapons. But the monster named Naruto chose to suit up for the fight, he equipped his Black Axe IV for his weapon and Wormsbane Charm 3, Death Stench Grip Alpha, Death Stench Bowels Alpha, Anja Helm Alpha, Guild Boots Cross Alpha, and Kashala Sista Beta. Naruto headed into the lava cavern his clones had found a small tunnel that lead to another cavern and where Teostra currently was. Naruto loaded his sling with bomb pods to help bring down any loose stalactites on Teostra. He soon reached the end of the tunnel and entered the cavern that served as Teostra's den. The cavern was enormous with lava surrounding a large platform in the middle of the area. Cue Teostra's in-game intro cutscene. The Ostra let loose a powerful roar before rushing towards Naruto, reacted quickly dodging to the right and throwing several explosive tags on Teostra's side before detonating them. The blast threw Teostra of its balance and crashed into a wall. Naruto fired off several water bullets at Teostra, while it was dizzy from the impact of the wall, Teostra roared in anger from the damage at fired several fireballs at Naruto in revenge. Naruto counted with water style. Water wall the wall fizzling out Teostra's fireballs, Naruto moved in close and stuck hard with a switch axe. The axe hacked away at Teostra's scales with a multi-hit combo before Naruto changed it into the sword version and stabbed it deep into the beast's side. Naruto then hammered the trigger on the handle of the weapon, with each pull of the trigger, a pulse of energy was sent into the monster doing more damage with each pulse. After several blasts, the energy ran out and the weapon returned to its axe from, the more Naruto struck with the weapon, the faster the energy was built up. After the second round of pulse attacks finished Teostra had enough and roared once more before taking off into the air and moving to another area. Naruto didn't chase after the monster right away, instead he took the time to sharpen his blade and down a potion to help recover from the first round of the fight. 
Cracking Teostra wasn't hard, the monster had moved to the cavern with the crystal pillar, Naruto fired off two bomb pods at the selling to dislodge rocks to fall on Teostra, knocking it to the ground. Naruto rushed forwards and leapt onto Teostra's head and hacked away at the hardened fur to expose the soft flesh underneath. Once exposed Naruto slammed the blade deep into Teostra, Naruto then began hammering the trigger handle once again, before releasing all the stored energy at once in a huge explosion that blew off both of Teostra's horns and did major damage to the rest of Teostra. The ostra got back on its feet and roared loudly, its next move surprised Naruto because it leapt into the air, then Teostra started gathering energy for an attack. Naruto at once started backpedaling and looking for cover from the incoming explosion, Naruto ducked behind a tunnel wall a second later the blast detonated. Naruto moved out his mind thinking a revised plan against the monster. Naruto headed back out into the cavern ready to continue his fight, the Teostra had not noticed him yet, so that gave him the chance to set up a trap for the monster. Naruto made a clone and had it place the trip mines at where he hid from the Teostra's explosive attack, the plan was to make the Teostra chase after him and into the trap. Naruto loaded the slinger with piecing pods, Naruto fired two at Teostra, drawing its attention to himself and leading it into the trap tunnel, the Teostra charged towards Naruto setting off the explosives with thunderous roar. The Teostra collapsed to the ground, its body slightly smoking from the explosives, Naruto focused on the head wanting to do as much damage as possible. He swung hard with the axe building up energy, then switching to the blade form. The blade cut deeply into the scaled hide of the monster, Naruto continued to slash away at the downed Teostra. He knew that he didn't have much time before Teostra got back up, so he constantly moved between the weak points on Teostra, Naruto finished by charging a large amount of charka into the axe and slammed it down on Teostra's head, causing a massive explosion. The Teostra got back on its feet following the blast, it fired an explosive fireball at Naruto while jumping into the air and trying to fly away. Naruto seeing his chance for a mount attack grappled up to the selling and latched himself at Teostra landing on its tail. Naruto started hacking away at the base of the tail, the Teostra doing everything it could to knock him off. The Teostra leapt into the air and slammed its tail against the wall, knocking Naruto off, but before he was, he placed explosive tags on where he was attacking. The explosions were followed by an enormous impact of Teostra crashing into the ground, the tail was blown off in the explosion. Naruto at once charged up a water Rasengan and hit Teostra in the middle of its chest, the attack left a massive scar its chest that was bleeding heavily. As Teostra got up from the last attack, Naruto noticed that it was limping and heading back towards its nest, signaling the end of the battle. Naruto rushed after it not wanting to risk the possibility of it escaping to a new area. Before it could reach its nest, Naruto fired off a flash pot at Teostra, sending it crashing to the ground, Naruto rushed forward dealing a five-hit combo on Teostra before being knocked away. Teostra then leapt into the air and started gathering energy once again creeping for its supernova attack. Naruto grappled up to the selling and then air dashed away from Teostra to avoid the attack. The supernova tore through the cavern slamming into Naruto and slamming him into the wall, the Teostra flew off while Naruto was dazed from the attack. Naruto drank a high potion to recover his heath and strength, he then sharpened his switch axe and prepared for the final stretch against Teostra. When he reached the cavern, he originally found Teostra in, the beast was sleeping in the middle of the molten rock platform. Naruto placed the barrel bombs that he made earlier in front of Teostra and set them off with a bomb pod. The explosion failed to finish of Teostra, but Naruto knew his next attack would, first he charged up a Rasengan in his hand, then channeled more Charka into his hand, taking the form of a dragon's head, finally he added water Charka to the mix, making the Charka turn darker blue, with water streams circling around his wrist. The attack was a variation of his father's own attack the Rasengan, over the years he had expanded on the attack, making several variations off the attack this being one of them. Water Dragon's Fang Rasengan Naruto said. The attack taking the form of its namesake of a roaring dragon that opened its mouth revealing the Rasengan inside its mouth. The attack slammed into Teostra slamming it into the wall of the cavern, Teostra gave off one last roar before falling to the ground. Naruto gave an exhausted sigh of relief at the fact the monster was dead, the beast gave him several close calls during the fight. It had nearly knocked him into the lava on a few occasions and hit him hard with its supernova attack blasting him away so it could flee. Naruto quickly sealed away the corpse and headed out of the cave eager to the others the good news. At the base with the Thundercats. It had been a few hours since Naruto had left to fight against the monster, Tigra and Chitara were in Tigra's office overlooking paperwork that concerned the base. It was mostly a distraction for themselves to keep from worrying about Naruto. They knew that Naruto could take care of himself, but that didn't stop them from being concerned about his well-being. How do you think Naruto is doing against the monster? Chitara asked as she turned to Tigra who was sitting behind his desk doing paperwork. 
Agra looked up from his work, he could see that she was worried for him, he should be fine, he was able to take down the other two monsters without much difficulty. I trust in his skills that he will be fine, besides this isn't his first hunt, Tigra said. Before either could continue the conversation a knock on the door drew their attentions. Um and Tigra said. It was one of the guards Lord Tigra Naruto has returned from the hunt, the beast has been killed. Tigra and Chitara both looked at one another before rushing towards the entrance. They found Naruto and Lion-O already talking, they assumed that Naruto was debriefing him about the monster. Naruto saw them and waved them over to join in the conversation, as they got closer, they heard Lion-O asking about what Naruto's next move was. Do you have any idea on where you're headed to next, do you have any leads on new monsters? Lion-O asked. Naruto shake his head not sure right now, the main goal was gathering information to pass on to other nations, so they are well informed. I am thinking of headed to the capital to pick up more supplies and materials since the town I visited didn't have a vast choice of goods. The others were surprised at the fact that he was headed to the capital, Tigra, and Chitara knew that Lion-O intended to invite him to the capital to exchange information with him. That is great, I wanted to ask you to come there anyways because I want to ask you for any information you have on the monsters you have encountered, as well as setting up a way to communicate with you in case we need your help in the future, lion -O said. No problem, I already do that with Princess Celestia anytime I discover or encounter a new monster. I have a special journal that anytime I encounter a new monster, a new page is unlocked with that monster's information on it, Naruto replied. lion -O and the others were surprised to hear Naruto had such a unique artifact in his possession. That would make fighting monsters easier with their information on hand, it would allow them to be better prepared for battles. Naruto would you mind if I looked at the journal? lion -O asked. Naruto handed the journal over to lion -O to look at, the journal broke down each monster into sections from the first page with the image and stats of the monster, the next page showed weak points and what weapon type worked best on what weak point, and the last page was a breakdown on what types of material you got from the monster. Lion-O whistled in amazement at some of the monsters that Naruto has met so far in his journey. I am impressed you have fought some impressive monsters in your travels. Some of them I would never want to fight against if I had a choice, Lion-O said the others agreeing with him seeing some of the more dangerous monsters that Naruto went up against. Naruto nodded his head in understanding yes I have encountered several monsters, I am discovering new ones just as fast. At the same time, I have found extraordinarily little on the group that brought me here or their current goals. As they were talking a guard came forward letting know that the transport lion -O had requested was ready to take them to the capital. We better get going they are expecting us back at the capital, lion -O said. The group headed towards the transport meeting up with Panthro, who was fully healed by Naruto before he left to fight against Yastra. Naruto noticed the strange vehicle that he assumed was their transport, he had seen similar ones in his travels in Thundera. It gave him a fright because he had never seen anything like it before. Agra saw the puzzled look on Naruto's face and assumed that Naruto had never met a vehicle before. Naruto what you are looking at is the thunder tank, Panthro's pride and joy, Tigra said. Panthro shot Tigra a dirty look but didn't deny his words. Everyone climbed inside while Panthro took the driver's seat, Naruto noticed that Panthro smiled when he heard the tank start up. The ride was an enjoyable experience for Naruto, it reminded him of when he stretches his wings and flew. The ride ended when they reached the capital, Naruto noticed the air around the capital was peaceful, everyone walking around with smiles and talking happy with one another. Soon enough they took notice of them and started cheering and clapping for the heroes of Thundera. They smiled and waved to their citizens, they seem happy that you and the others are back, Naruto said to lion -O in a teasing tone of voice. The group soon entered the palace the guards saluting them as they went in. They met with an elder lion inside, he was dressed in what Naruto believed to be formal robes. The lion bowed to lion O. Oh, welcome back my king, have the monsters plaguing our land been taken care of? Who is this strange pony you have brought with you? The elder asked. Yes, elder Sky Fang the monsters are taken care of, my companion is Naruto Uzumaki, the monster hunter we have been hearing rumors about for so long. He also took the care of the monsters including the one that nearly killed Panthro, lion O. replied while gesturing to Naruto. Sky Fang was surprised to hear that his majesty had run into the infamous hunter while dealing with the monsters plaguing their lands. He could easily see that Naruto was far from your average pony, to him the feeling he gave off reminded him of Princess Celestia. Sky Fang turned to Naruto I must thank you then, when we heard what happened to Panthro we were worried about other villages coming under attack from the monsters. Naruto waved his hand think nothing of it, I was glad I was able to help out. I was able to gain information on the new monsters. Lion O turned to Sky Fang I asked Naruto to stay with us so we can set up a communications network, that way if we need his help with monsters or exchange information with each other. If no one minds I'm going to head towards the market area to check out the wares and pick up any supplies I may need, Naruto said getting the other's attention. 
Ditara walked up to Naruto I'll come with you to show you the way and make sure no one gives you a tough time. Naruto and Chitara headed out to the market while Lion-O, Sky Fang and Tigra, made to Lion-O's office to discuss the best way to set up the network. Panthro headed towards the training field to work on the new guards. Marketplace. The marketplace was busy various felines walking around enjoying the open air of the market. There were a variety of vendors selling distinct items or advertising their wares. The wares ranged from fruits and vegetables to jewelry. As Naruto and Chitara made their way through the market they attracted many stares from the populace, Naruto figured it was because he was a pony in their nation, and Chitara is one of their nation's heroes. Ditara noticed that Naruto was checking out all the vendors had to offer, she wondered if there was anything she couldn't find. Naruto, is there anything in particular you are looking for? The top things are food for the road, some fabric and clothes since some of mine are getting to worn out and a few other items I may need, Naruto replied. I know where we can get everything so let's start with the food and go from there, Chitara said. Naruto nodded his head and motioned to Chitara to lead on, the two exploring all the market checking different stalls and vendors. As they moved about the market, they came across a vendor selling weapons, Chitara brought up the question of weapons to Naruto Naruto I'm curious do you make your own weapons for hunting monsters? Naruto didn't answer at first because he was checking out the weapons for sale, he was comparing them to his own, seeing if there was anything he could add to his work. I make my own weapons, the ones I use when I am hunting monsters are made from my kills and various ores, that also includes the armor I wear during the hunt. I have different weapons that I use for personal use, defending myself from bandits and such. Hitara thought for a moment would you mind showing some of your work to the others, they were curious about them if you are willing. I don't have a problem with that, maybe when we get back, I can show you some of the advanced weapons as well as the basic ones. I will also bring out a few of my personal weapons that I made before I started hunting monsters. Naruto soon had brought everything he needed for supplies, so he and Chitara headed back to the castle. Naruto noticed that dusk was setting in meaning they had been shopping for longer than he thought. They meet the others in the dining hall, they started chatting amongst themselves. Chitara made sure to tell Lion-O that Naruto would show the weapons he had made for hunting monsters and a few of his personal ones, which the others were happy to hear. Naruto I am glad you are allowing us to see your weapons, I want to allow our blacksmith to look at them as well. He is interested in looking at them as well, he wants to meet with you if that's okay, lion -O said. I'm fine with it, I hope I can see some of his work as well, Naruto replied. The rest of the dinner was discussing some of the monsters that Naruto has met in his travels, then they talked about what they knew of the cultists' actions and the creatures that the cult employs or uses. Following dinner lion -O had a maid show Naruto to his room for the night, Naruto thanked the maid and went inside. Naruto at once unsealed a few of trunks holding his clothes and weapons, he then sat down at the desk in the room and looked over the maps he had planning out the next leg of his journey. With everything set up for tomorrow, Naruto decided to hit the hay, he would make sure to set up the contact with Lion-O before he headed out. The next day. Naruto got up and taken a shower, he had changed his look up with some clothes he had picked up. He was wearing black steel toe boots with spikes on the toe end for extra damage. The pants were loose-fitting and had a blue flame pattern with a white outline going down each pant leg. He had on a sleeveless armored shirt on, the armor was tightly woven in between layers of the fabric, on top of the shirt he wore a navy blue combat vest that had several pockets for assorted items and scrolls. He followed up with a dark burnt orange jacket, on the back was the red whirlpool insignia of his clan on his back, with a dragon forming from the end of the whirlpool. Naruto sealed up his stuff and headed down to breakfast meeting with the others. They liked Naruto's change of look and waved him over to join them for breakfast. You decided to change up change up your look, it looks good on you. Chitara said. Thanks, my old outfit was starting to show signs of being worn out. We talked about yesterday about showing my weapons that I use for hunting monsters, do you still want to see them? Naruto asked. Lion-O nodded his head yes if you are willing, we can do this after breakfast if that's okay. That's fine with me. Once breakfast was done the group headed towards the blacksmith's forge, the room was large enough to display the weapons and such. The group soon reached the room and knocked on the door, a gruff voice told them to come in. The blacksmith was a panther, he had various scares and burns from his work. The cat reminded him of Panthro in a way, but not as big as him. The blacksmith walked up to Naruto with curious eyes, so you're the hunter that the others told me about, I have been looking forward to seeing your work since I first heard about you. My name is Blazing Heart, Blaze for short. Naruto held out his hand my name is Naruto Uzumaki Ninja Monster Hunter and several other things. Blaze shake his hand nice to meet you do you have everything you need or do you need to grab the weapons from your room? Naruto shook his head and pulled out his weapon scroll, I have everything sealed away in this scroll, just need a sec to set them up. Naruto first set up the first level of the metal and bone level weapons, those being the first and most basic level of the weapon tiers. 
Then he pulled out a few of the weapon variations that he used has used in his hunts. These ones are the first level tiers of the weapons pointing towards the metal and bone weapons, the others are more advanced versions or higher tiers than the basic ones. They are made from different monster parts as well as ores. They were impressed at the weapons, they could see that some were simple to use, but others took skill to wield them. Blaze examined the higher tier weapons easy seeing that they were powerful and made by a skilled smith, he was impressed and amazed at the weapons and skill that Naruto shown in making them. Do all the weapons come with a unique style for using the weapon? Tigra asked. There is a style for all weapons, I have also developed different attacks and techniques with each of the weapon. The armor pieces also have different buffs that vary from piece to piece, they buff range from ones that boost the attack with certain elements or defense against said element to ones that weaken a monster's natural abilities, Naruto explained. The others listened to Naruto's explanation of the weapons and armor and were impressed at what he told them about the armors. The fact some of them offered extra defense against some of the monster's natural abilities was extremely helpful during the hunt. Do you have any other weapons you have made when you are traveling around? Blaze asked wanting to see more of Naruto's weapons. Naruto nodded his head and took out a firearm that was golden in color and had a long cylinder barrel. Caster gun from Outlaw Star, the next one was an Okatana that when pulled from its sheath, revealed the blade to be made of glowing cobalt crystal. The final weapon seemed a bit strange it was a dual-bladed weapon, but the blade on one side was shorter than the other. The blades were strange as well the longer blade was made from strange metal, with what looked like a wave pattern on the blade. The smaller blade was made have the same metal, but the pattern was red on the blade instead of blue like on the other. The others examined the weapons, they astounded by the weapons each one was created a master. Blaze picked up the crystal blade he could see that the blade was sharper than any other sword he had forged before. Naruto saw Blaze examining the crystal blade be careful with that Blaze, the blade is much sharper than it appears. Anthro asked the question on everyone's minds, why did you make a crystal blade, I can see that it's very sharp but wouldn't be fragile or difficult to repair. Naruto shook his head the blade is easy to repair, as for its durability, the blade is incredibly tough, very few weapons can scratch the blade or do damage to it. I like to call it Aoiheim, which means blue princess in my language. The others nodded their heads since the name fit the blade perfectly. The other weapons were special and unique in their own way. Before they could ask Naruto about the other weapons a guard burst in the room looking for them. King Lion oh we have urgent matter, the outpost on the edge of Thindera is under attack by strange monster. The base was first attacked by smaller monsters that they were able to fend off the small ones, but a larger monster is moving towards the base. They are asking for help from the monster hunter ASAP. I head over there now, before I left the base, I placed a special marker nearby that I can teleport to an instant. Hagra grabbed Naruto's shoulder before he could move away I come with you, I will be able to support you with the base's firepower. We can coordinate our attacks with each other with the radios. Tigra said as he handed Naruto a radio headset. If you're ready we can leave, I must warn you though the first time is not the easiest on your stomach. Tigra nodded his head, Naruto then placed his hand on Tigra's shoulder and teleported to his maker at the base. At the base. Naruto and Tigra appeared outside of the base in a yellow flash, Tigra was soon bending over and coughing heavily. Naruto did what he could to help his friend out with his friend with medical charka. Naruto summoned a few clones to scout ahead and discover the creature current location and find out what the monster was. The clones came back within a few minutes with latest information on the monster including its name the Lao Shunlung. Naruto decided to go with range for fighting against the monster and summoned his bow and quiver, on Turgang bow, Naruto, then placed the quiver on his back and got ready for the battle. He didn't have time to grab armor so he to be careful, there would be times like these in the future, so be prepared. Hey Lao Shunlung intro scene. This is one of the largest monsters that Naruto has seen so far, but at the same time Lao moved slowly towards the base, it seemed not to care about anything in its way. Hagra headed inside of the base to take command and direct the base to aid Naruto as best they can. Naruto you ready on your end? I'm ready. Naruto prepped the bow for the battle, the bow was powerful and designed for piecing targets, especially those with heavy armor or scales. The battle started with an ear-piecing roar from the Lao Shunlung. Naruto shot volley after volley of arrows at the beast, unfortunately for Naruto the arrows while piecing Lao Shun Lung scales, it didn't do much damage because of the monster's size. He knew it was time to change up tactics, first he summoned six clones to place barrel bombs at the beast's legs to stun it. He drew the monster's attention while the clones did their job and planted the bombs, he started using power coating on the arrows to increase their damage. He also fired off cluster grenades that have a paralyzing touch to them, that way the beast would be easier to fight against it. The end goal of the plan was to stun the creature so that Tigra can hit the monster with the heavy guns if they can take it out or drive it away whichever possibility comes available. 
The clones were ready on their end Naruto fired off a large cluster bomb arrow at the beast, the arrow held a large cylinder filled with spike bombs that explode on contact with the target. He followed that up with an extra large arrow called a dragon piecer, the arrowhead was exceptionally large and tore through monsters scales limited ease. Naruto ordered the clones to move in, while he fired off a net trap arrow, the arrow holds a large net that entangles the target, briefly immobilizing the target. This allowed the clones to place the bombs with attached tags to increase the blast strength of the bombs. Naruto readied another dragon piecer arrow and aimed for the bombs, Naruto released the arrow detonating the bombs with a huge explosion. Naruto called Tigra Tigra now is your best chance for major damage do it quickly, it won't be stunned for long. Alright. Tigra prepared the heavy cannons for fire, the main screen in the base showed the stunned Lao Shun Lung. How long until the cannons are charged? Tigra asked looking toward the operators. They are ready now sir, awaiting your orders. Pirate the monster. Outside of the base two large cannons glowed with power as they charged with power, the cannons fully charged unleashed their energy with a tremendous roar, striking the monster head on. The cannons did sever damage to the Lao Shun Lung, breaking off many scales and parts of its horns. Naruto followed the cannons barrage with a charge piecing shot, Naruto could charge Sharka and the arrows for extra damage. The attack hit the open wound on Lao Shun Lung's front right leg, the damage was severe, causing it to roar in pain. Hagra how long before you can fire another volley at the monster? It will be at least 15 minutes before the cannons will be fully charged, I can use the smaller ones to give you support though. Okay, let me know when they're ready Naruto could tell another volley from the cannons would finish it off until then he would have to keep moving. Naruto brought his caster gun, the weapon was designed to fire off rounds that have techniques sealed inside of them. What made them even stronger and do more damage was to channel Charka into the round before firing, the more Charka you channeled the higher the damage of the round. After learning about magic and how to use it, he developed spell versions of the shells with the same idea for channeling. Naruto readied a heavy arrow shot, the shot was a spell that fired off multiple arrows that struck pierced a target and exploded. Naruto took aim and pulled the trigger the gears spun, and a light appeared from the barrel streaking towards Lao Shunlung, taking the form of a cluster of arrows striking against the monster. Naruto continued moving and striking the monster when the opportunity arose, doing what he could to kill time until the cannons were fully charged. Soon enough the cannons were once again charged up, and Tigra ordered the final volley to finish off the beast. Inside the base the soldiers were cheering at the battle being over, Tigra was glad that no one was killed or injured during the attack, but at the same time something felt off to him. Tigra sir, there is a strange figure that appeared on top of the corpse of the beast. Hagra rushed towards the screen to confirm the soldier words, he too saw the figure noticing the figure fit the description of the cultists. He had a bad feeling why this cult member was here, he called Naruto to tell him what he saw. Naruto there is a figure matching the description of the cultist that you gave us, be careful he may be up to something. I see him be prepared we may have another fight on our hands. Naruto replied wondering the cultist was up to, he was getting a bad feeling from the person before he could make a move the cultist summoned a large sickly glowing green crystal. Naruto did not like the feel of the energy the crystal gave off, the energy felt twisted and corrupted. The cultist then slammed the crystal down in the center of the Lao Shun Lung's head, the glow from the crystal seeped into the monster. The monster rose once more brought back to life by the crystal, crystal same as color as the original spawned across the monster. The monster gave off an ear-shattering roar as the battle was reignited, Naruto fired off a soul spear at the monster, the spell is designed to go straight through armor and hard scales, but cancels out upon impact with the monster. It's possible that the crystal may block magic from hitting the monster, like a nullification shield that cancels out magic spells. Naruto thought to himself. Hagra as soon as the cannons are charged unleash everything on the monster, the crystals block magic attacks, but the cannons should deal damage to the beasts. Naruto said he was already moving and firing arrows at the beast, thankfully the barrier only affected his magic attacks and nothing else. Naruto created more clones to plant more barrels and distract the beast, with the barrels set Naruto notched two arrows with explosive tags and fired both at the barrels, creating a large explosion that caused the monster to fall to the ground, Naruto readied a dragon arrow. Naruto fired off Jutsu taking advantage of the stunned monster, Earth style. Drilling fangs the attack was two large spearing spears from the ground, tearing through the belly of the Lao Shun Lung. Naruto then fired off the dragon arrow, it tore through the monster, further weakening the beast. Naruto could easy see the beast was on its last legs, the crystal may have brought it back to life, but it was still damaged from before. Hagra called him letting Naruto now the cannons were ready to finish off the monster once again, the monster was brought down after the heavy shelling this time for good. Naruto didn't see the cultist, but he had a feeling this would be the last time that this happened. Hagra met him outside of the base happy that the monster was dead and that everyone was okay. You didn't happen to see where the cultist ran off to did you? 
Naruto shake his head no, but I don't that this is the last time this will happen more than likely a test run, maybe too if it would work or not. What concerns me is the energy I felt that I felt coming off the crystal, the energy felt wrong to me and has me concerned. The base was fine, and there was nothing else that needed Naruto and Tigra headed back to the capital to report in. Naruto used the same technique to bring them back, Naruto and Tigra explained everything to Lion-O and the others. They were surprised to hear about the cultists and the strange crystals, the transformation brought on by the crystal. Naruto gave lion -O copies of the files on monsters, Naruto also gave him a necklace exactly to the one he gave Princess Celestia, except his was in the shape of a lion's head. I take it you are heading out to the next land already, I would ask you to stay longer, but it looks like you would refuse me. lion -O said. It's for the best you never know whether or not a monster could be causing problems or the cultists. Naruto replied. lion -O sighed but smiled at Naruto he knew that Naruto enjoyed traveling around, and while being here was nice, he stood out amongst the felines. Lion-O and the others soon said their goodbyes and waved Naruto off wishing him luck on his journey. Naruto was a way out from the capital when decided to stop for a snack, he noticed a presence nearby hiding themselves. He put out extra food feeling that's what the being was after. If you hungry I'm willing to share food with you, so feel free to come out I won't hurt you. Naruto said to ease the state of mind of whoever was hiding from him, from the bushes nearby appeared a cat wearing leather armor. The cat reached his waist and strangely had the same fur coloring as Kurama. Thank you for the food mister, the cat said chowing down on the sandwich he gave him. No problem, do you have a name? Naruto asked. The cat frowned and looked down no I don't, I have been alone for as long as I can remember. Naruto frowned, the situation reminded him of own, but he can do something about it. I can give you a name if you want, the color of your fur reminds me of a friend that I knew his name was Kurama. If you want that can be your name, he was my best friend. The cat was surprised at the fact this pony wanted to give him a name, especially the name of his former friend. You would really give me the name of your friend, no one has shown me such kindness before. Kurama replied tearing slightly because of the kindness shown by Naruto. Naruto placed his hand on Kurama's head rubbing slightly, getting a low purr from the cat. You remind me of him, and I know what it's like to be alone in the world without a friend. Naruto remembered the good times he shared with Kurama after he was able to crack the mask he put on following his father's death. He was the one who supported him the most, especially when he was at his lowest moment because of the Hiruzen's betrayal. Kurama looked at Naruto with happiness, but at the same time he wanted to ask him something, but was nervous about the question. Naruto noticed this and wondered what was bugging the feline. What's on your mind? I can tell you want to ask me something, I promise I will not do anything to harm you in any way, Naruto said, wanting to help his friend feel relaxed. Kurama looked nervously at Naruto afraid of the answer to the question he wants to ask Naruto, I want to ask to come with you when you leave, I have nothing here tie me down here. Naruto brought his hand to his face and thought, are you sure you want to come with me, I'm fine with it, but it will be dangerous around me because of my job. My job deals with hunting monsters that are appearing across the lands. Kurama was surprised to hear that Naruto is hunting the monsters that have been appearing across the lands. He had seen a few of them flying in the air and walking around, he made sure to stay away from them so he wouldn't become a snack for them. I still want to come with you, I know how to defend myself from different books and such that I have found and collected. I am willing to learn to help further my skills and watch your back, Kurama replied with firm tone of voice. Naruto smiled at Kurama, he could tell that he was being serious coming with as well as training to become stronger. Okay then, but I warn you now the training won't be easy. Kurama nodded his head in understanding, Naruto laughed at Kurama's brave response to the harsh training that was to come. Naruto stood up and dusted any crumbs and dirt off and motioned to his traveling partner we should get going then. But that Naruto headed off to the next destination along with his new partner the feline Palico Kurama, what new adventures awaited them. What if Naruto banished and wanted back and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.